<laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, no need no need to tiptoe. There she go. There she go. Yo. Mahalo. <laughs> <laughs> so for Samoans, it's Talofa. Talofa. <laughs> hey, I learned something tonight. I learned something Bro, tonight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's up? Baby girl. Welcome to the Rough House, ladies and gentlemen. You are near now here live with another episode of Grown Folk Talk. I am one folk with the hostess with the most since Bronx Ronin in the sense, even though my name says Townsend Originals, because we are Townsend Originals, the majority of us here. You know what I mean? We got Kevin here. We got Felton Flowers. We got Mr. Wise. We got Fran, the, the blockbuster <laughs> author over here. Don't forget to get that book. You know I got to say get the book off of Amazon. Just Do It is also in here. Shaniqua Steele, a.k.a. CEO of My Enterprises. What's your slogan? What's Make today slogan? better than yesterday, baby. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> got to get it right. Nah, we in here tonight. This is going to be a really, really, really good conversation. Uh, we are talking about relationship Hello. killers and shit situationships. I had to emphasize the shit, the shit because it ain't something real. It's it's a, it's a it's a debauchery. So we are gonna talk a little bit about that. Got a bunch of questions, and I'm sure there's gonna be follow on questions and stories and all of that stuff. Uh, before we go ahead and get started with that, gotta hit y'all with the anecdotes. As most of you should already know, we do have a YouTube channel. It is Grown Folk Talk Tribunal. Can't stress that enough. Go ahead and search for it in YouTube. It should bring up all of our content, including episodes from Grown Folk Talk dating back to uh, last week. I said June. I was mistaken. We started putting them on YouTube back in early July. So from July going forward, all of our episodes of Grown Folk Talk are on there. Anything before that is on Instagram Live. Go ahead and check us out. We are the GFT. And... You know, that's all I got to say about that. So appreciate your support. Like, comment, subscribe if you are feeling the vibe. Um, I want to give a shout out to Francis for my um, thank you for putting us on to the talk that we had on Wednesday on uh, Instagram Live. Um, it was an honor and a privilege to be in there to um answer some questions from Yaziel um, reference to the transition from teenager to adulthood and all of that stuff in between. It's a serious topic. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to more of those. So if any more of those follow on conversations come up, please let us know. We will jump on there in a heartbeat. Um, hopefully we could get it on a venue where we can get the whole Grow Folk Talk Tribunal on there. Just, you know, just uh, sharing our insight because there's a lot of stories to tell. So thank you and tell your daughter thank you as well. Much yeah, she told me that you hit her up. And yeah, uh, yeah that was her first time doing that. Wow. Um, but she's pretty mature for her age. Mm -hmm. um, so she's the one that I was talking about in the book in chapter one. Yes, I figured that. <laughs> I put, nah, I put two and two together. I put two and two together because I was reading it and I was like, this is probably her oldest. <laughs> And then it didn't dawn on me when we started the live and she popped on. I didn't put two and two together like that was your daughter. You well, know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. She um she I, I'm I'm not trying to put her on blast or get in trouble allegedly, but you know, she asked me for my age before we even got started. So mm -hmm. I was like, and then you was like, Yeah, that's my daughter. I was like, Oh, respect. No, for real, respect. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She said, yeah, that's my daughter. I turned my head like, mm, 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 I'm good. Mm. Mama ain't kicking my ass. Yeah, I don't play when it comes to them kids. Yeah, man. Oh, I don't play. Yo, that was Barb funny. can tell you, I tell, I tell her all the time, I will allegedly burn somebody's house down. They fuck with my daughter. So Straight I up. get it. Ain't no allegedly here. I'll burn somebody's house down. I'm going on record. <laughs> Ran over there waiting to exhale that ass. <laughs> Sign our bitches. This is going to be looking at the dating atmosphere and the dynamic with how 
families tie in with that. You know what I mean? Future families and current families and all of that stuff. Um, so we're going to be diving into that. At the forefront of this discussion, though, we have to kind of look at the reasoning behind the disparity between men and women. And by disparity, I mean the perspective of both parties. Men see things a certain way and women see things a, a certain way uh, when it comes to roles and responsibilities in a relationship. All right, so my first question to y'all is, why is men versus women or women versus men such a big thing today? Because of social media. Social media, yeah. Social media. yeah. Elaborate. Social media. What, what about social media is driving that, that war, for lack of a better term? Everything the way the way woman the way the woman is looking, the way the mm -hmm. men is looking, you know, just is everything. You know, they ain't get a certain amount of likes. It's everything. Like like you can you can see more now in social media than you could then. I could be a hole back then and nobody gonna know. And no one knows. tell. But is now you got me on social. I'm I'm, with, I'm I'm taking pictures with this girl. I'm taking pictures with that girl. I'm taking pictures with this girl. I could be doing something or not, and I'm a hoe. You see it more now on social media than you did back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like back then, like when going around looking for girls, like, damn, I wish I know how she looked. Versus today, damn, her OnlyFans is $3.99. I can see it right now. <laughs> <laughs> he went beyond the legendary on that one. If that ain't a job, on the street. That's beyond allegedly. And I, I never seen it as men versus women. Now it's usually men versus men and women versus women, because yeah. that woman trying to beat out this girl on her social media, and this dude trying to beat out this dude on his social media. I don't never see it the other way around. Like I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why dudes be on there flossing it, putting the money by the ear. I'm not trying to put the money by my ear. I'm trying to spend that shit. So, <laughs> but, the other, but one dude do it. And then another dude's trying to do it. Oh, my stack was bigger than his. So I'll mm -hmm. look all this money on my bed spread out. Like, that's what I see. Dudes versus dude on, on social media. And it's fucking wild, bro. Mm -mm. Would you say that social media in itself creates a, um, a fallacy of vision of what right looks like in society when it comes to potential partners? You know what I see? That question. Sorry, Kevin. Only thing I see with that is everybody wants to be like something they see on TV. Everybody wants yeah. to be Jay and Beyonce. Everybody want to be Cardi B and Offset. Everybody wants those type of couple goals when they really don't know what's going on with those actual couples. Mm -hmm. Because everything that glitter ain't gold. Everything you see on online is fake as shit. I always thought nowadays is like trying to be in a relationship now is a joke. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is just my own perspective, and this is just my opinion on it. It seems like everybody only want to be in relationships because of what they see. Nobody wants to expand. Nobody wants to go through the hardships. Nobody wants to communicate. Nobody wants to go through the actual relationship without having issues and having problems. Everybody want to have it the easy way. Everybody want to make everybody come in a relationship and be perfect. Everybody wants everything to be perfect. This is just me. Like I said, I can't speak for everybody else, but I feel like everybody is just using social media as a front too. Cause I've been in a relationship where, oh, they look so good. They look so cute together. That's not what's going on behind the scenes. Right. All right. This All is right. just for y'all. Cause y'all don't need to know what's going on behind the scenes. Y'all need to, y'all need to see what I show you. Mm -hmm. It's a smoke screen. Yeah. Exactly. Super. Like a big, Yo. a big one. Cause that's dead like that. Cause I got, I got my home girl and her husband. He, he's in the Marines or whatever. And they've been together since high school, whatever. And you look on a social media, especially Facebook, and they look like the perfect fucking family. Then you go to their house, and they're cursing each other out, like, nonstop. <laughs> I'm like, yo, take a break. Mm -hmm. No bueno. I wanted to go back to the original question. Yep. My thought on that was that um, I think it's just to create a divide amongst us as a collective. Yeah. So if you separate us on the basic level, then we can't see 
or empathize with each other because we're divided uh, amongst our sexuality or our gender. And if we were to come together as a united front, we are a powerful, we're a mm. powerful unit. So yeah, it's, it's social media and stuff, all, those are all the avenues and outlets that they use to separate our voices. But mm. when we're connecting on spaces, on uh, things that like touch our families, that touch our businesses, that touch our communities, there's a way bigger goal than what is just, you know, on the subsurfaces of this conversation. That's a that's a great point, Fran, because I, I, I kind of go along the side of you on this. You know, it's it's a and especially in this day and age and in this country, you know, we're divided by so many different things. You know what I mean? You have men and women, uh, yeah. black and white, race versus race, gender versus gender, you know, like there's so many different divides. <clears throat> and, you know, with that being said, it, it I kind of want to ask a follow-up question to that, you know, because we all kind of agree that social media does have a big influence on that divide, right? So do you think that social media is the root cause of that divide, or do you think social media is actually amplifying that divide? I think it's an amplification because I think it starts on a more uh, sub-level. Like, mm. I think it's more of like a system thing, starting like with our families, from school, all the things that we learn there. And I mean, because you think about it, when a baby comes out, the baby is influenced by the environment that it's in. It doesn't mm -hmm. come out saying, hey, man, fuck you because you're this color. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. That, may, that, that baby might be like boss baby. Talking about, I run this shit. I come from baby core. This is the way it's going to be. We're going to smash these puppies, allegedly. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, everything is really environmental. Like, we're fed these kind of things. So, like, in life we have to unlearn some of the things that we don't want to participate in, in anymore if that's what we choose to do hmm. Hmm. that's a great point i think part of the disparity is you know with regards to like dating you know females want a certain kind of dude like the dude has so much money and from a female perspective they're like well, I kind of want that. I want that too. You know what I mean? Um, they may have been brought brought up in households where the the mother, the single parent or whatever, say it's the mom, she got done dirty by the man. And her mother is now putting in her daughter's ear, don't worry about no fucking man. Go get your own bag, go get your own setup, do what you have to do, stand on your own two feet. And with that upbringing, that little girl then becomes a woman. She becomes modernized and she's out there doing what she has to do to stand up on her own two feet and not depend on a man at all. So that's the perspective that I'm trying to dig into. Basically what he was saying is, he was saying that, a woman is competing against a man. Okay. Yeah. Like basically how some women they feel like they don't need a man, kind of, or they want a certain type of man. But I only reason why I mean I kind of agree with Kenneth. I don't see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see I, I see definitely what he was saying is what do you what do you like what do you think? Like, do you see any women that's like competing against a man? You understand? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't really see that. But yeah, I do see um, women against women doing that. Mm. Um, and I feel like men do that too. Um, yeah. But it might be on a more subtle level or with uh, toys, so to speak, the things mm -hmm. that they collect uh, as like medals to say, hey, I got this. But yeah, I don't, I don't really see that there's a, a battle there. Okay. Like the LGBT thing that Shaniqua was talking about earlier. Okay. Got you. My my perspective on this is I don't see women competing with 
men. Like, if I'm competing with anybody, I'm competing with myself to make myself <laughs> better, to like <laughs> life better for my kids. So I'm not trying mm-hmm. to compete with anybody. And I feel like when you have women competing against women, you got a man behind that feeling like they got to pit each other against each other because you got saying one thing to one and you got them saying one thing to another. So if the competition within them, I feel like half of that comes from another person. Like if you feel like you got to compete with somebody, you don't need to be around that person. That's a good twist. Absolutely true. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so whoa. I have a, so I have a question. Because with my boys, we compete all the time. It's always a compete, but the but the competition it's, it's makes competition, us better. Though. Yeah, it's, it's making us better. Com- exactly. Yeah. We improve. We, we always improve it every day on it. So that competition I'm with, but competing with a girl, the only girl I'm probably competing with is Barb on my daughter for love. But I gotta take my daughter to Starbucks to get that love. So. I'm <laughs> but but I have a I have a question, Max. Are you are you kind of referring to like maybe job wise? Because I do see a lot of women getting into the job market. Are you trying to say something like that? See, in the job market, if I could cut in the job market of females, I'm not saying taking over, but are uh, dominating. They're, they're getting jobs where years ago they could have never got. Starting, you know, right. starting from. Miss Camilla, or whatever the goddamn name is, the vice president. Women are actually stepping up and doing a lot of jobs that no one said they could do. Right, and and that's what I'm, but that's what I'm asking, Max. Are you meaning in that aspect? I mean, that's part of it. So let me let me let me redirect real quick. Because so I think that's I'm, what you mean. I in mean, that I meant the question with regards to relationships, not oh, necessarily okay, okay. like competing for job market and maybe my explanation was a little bit off it happens it's been a long fucking friday (laughs) you know what i mean and some of us are still doing it you know um but let me give you a little bit of perspective when it comes to um i guess you can say um competing with like roles and perspectives Mm. in a relationship So, so let me give you let me give you a little synopsis right so For the men in the relationship, right, men are like, they're tired of getting overworked and not getting anything in return. There's a lot of dudes that are in relationships that are, for lack of a better word, they're sexless. There's no intimacy. There's no real support, et cetera, right? So that's from, and I'm not saying all men have this vision or have this problem in a relationship, right? But with women, it could be a number of things. It could be I'm tired of not getting respect. The man doesn't fucking lead. He doesn't provide. He doesn't understand my needs. He has no balls. He doesn't listen. He doesn't give a fuck. So it could be a number of things that's causing that disparity within a relationship. So I just really wanted somebody's perspective Uh, on that. Well, I, I do know, like, just even me talking to a couple of women, they complain about a lot of men not being leaders. Mm. And a lot of men get with you and in the beginning they good, but then you see basically they only want what they was missing from their mother. Mm. So they want you to be the mother. But I also see a lot of women who think that they can do everything and they do it. And when they do everything, when they get with this man, they expect that man a year or two later to step up. And when they don't, it's like, oh, he's stupid or he this, he that. No, that's that's how you got with him. You was already doing everything. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are being in relationship and they don't even match. Yeah. See, yeah. And that that's that's another where is a big relationship killer where you know a female coming in with that state of mind state in, I got everything. She goes into a relationship and can, you know, instead of looking at him as a partner, she's looking at him as a, you know, you gotta do what I do instead of let's find a way together. And then that's that's what kills the relationship a lot. If y'all don't work in communication like we talked about before, is no is no way a relationship gonna last without communication and all that. If you a lot of females if mental listening. If someone's talking, a lot of people really don't listen. And that's where a lot of conversations get turned into a little 
you know, it, it, could, it you could say one thing and with the wrong word and you can get the wrong response. I, I believe it's more of an understanding because I believe people listen. Yeah. Just, and they don't they don't under they don't they don't understand. They, they're not comprehended it's, at all. It, like and, and, they, and they expect they, certain things. Yeah. And as listen, some people, what it is, is they listen to. Just say their response and not really listen to words that's being thrown at them. That's that's the big part of it. And uh, Shaniqua, you hit the nail on the head uh, when you were talking about uh, getting with someone in particular that kind of resembles, you know, one, if not the other parent. You know what I mean? That stems back to conditioning. That stems back to the environment, as Fran was talking about. You know what I mean? And uh, say what? Okay. <laughs> of course, he now he now now Grumpy wants to show up. Say hi to the people. Hi. <laughs> say, say this is say this is grown folk talk. This is grown folk talk. <laughs> go, 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 go. All right, you go on ahead. <laughs> Every time he pops in, I gotta have him say it. Um. So, next one. When 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 did the emphasis on the family upbringing, marriages, and relationships really start to take a nosedive? And I think we kind of talked about it a little bit with social media, but are there any other external influences that cause that downfall? Uh not not having the conversation initially okay not communicating it yeah i think because when i i'm divorced i've been divorced for a very long time mm -hmm. um we never talked about how we were going to raise the kids i assumed because i was Samoan that shit was gonna go my way <laughs> damn <laughs> damn <laughs> that's kind of all i knew it was just like well Say something. My brothers are here. <laughs> <laughs> See, I could respect that. That was that was some honesty for your ass. That's right, that right. That's some real honesty. That's it. But can I say this though? Yeah. Um, I noticed that in past relationships, instead of having those tough conversations, uh people love to do subliminal stuff on social media. They like to say yeah. certain things that should have been said to that yeah. person. But they saying it to other people. So all they're doing is involving people in that that shouldn't be in it. Right. I've noticed that too. That's another I thing. I think it's not just um, on social media, Kevin. I think that's just in general. Like you'll mm -hmm. hear like if the conversation isn't had, you know, like Max was talking about earlier, it is a communication issue, but with self, because the the person that is uncomfortable with having that conversation, they're now trying to project what they're feeling onto the other person by using like um, like snide comments mm. or like little posts on social media when mm. it's self that needs to be in check because self is the one with the issue. So are you saying that even though this person isn't comfortable having a conversation because they basically not one with themselves? Yes. A lot okay. of the, uh, yeah, a lot of the times when um, people do have that kind of behavior where they make uh, snarky comments or what is that called when people um sarcastic sarcastic mm -hmm. it's because they're unsettled within themselves on that particular subject and so they don't know how to have a straight conversation so it's kind of like it's almost kind of like the um yeah. the defense mechanism for people that exhibit narcissistic traits kind of mm -hmm. along the same thread Listen, uh, that was a conversation that I had with my therapist, I say like two weeks ago. Mm. Yes. Narcissistic. That That's like a key thing in most of the conversations I have with her, because when it came to talking about past relationships, it was like, yeah, it's seems that nobody wants to everybody. Like I said, everybody wants to take the easy way out. It's better to just leave people alone than trying to figure out how to prepare it or how to, you know, maintain a relationship. It's just like, oh, so you don't want to be here, then you can go. Or fuck you, fuck you too. It's, yeah. it's, 
that t- that type of shit. Like yeah, it's easier to walk away versus dealing with the situation, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, you can't tell somebody when it comes to somebody that you truly love, you either gonna fight for them or you not. But usually, when you love people the way that you say you do, mm-hmm. that everybody social media, no matter whatever the case may be, you don't just let somebody walk away. And I've seen shit. I've walked away from stuff. I've been walked away from. It's that type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the only way, reason why I could say that because I was that person. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, had shit. That's why I'm divorced because I didn't know how to control my mouth. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't at one with my own self. I wasn't clear on what some of my own personal goals were or what some of my boundaries were or what some of my standards were. Shit, I didn't have any of that shit. Yeah. But thank God for bound for like, you know, books and resources, therapy and shit like that to help me find what those meaningful things are to myself. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I, I think a lot of I think a lot of people is brought up, especially women, they brought up in the church. And what a lot of people a lot of men need to realize is they're brought up in a church, so the man leads. So mm-hmm. that's what the majority of a lot of women look for. And it's like, if you don't know something, then it's like, now they got an attitude and they searching for someone else. And that's why a lot of women, like you had a lot of people say, oh, they like the girls, like the drug dealers. They like mm-hmm. the men with money. No, they like the men who's a boss. He's a leader. Mm-hmm. He, 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 don't, he don't talk to her nice. He talk to her crazy. That's what they like. Cause that's what they, that's what they seen. He talked to everybody else crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. A lot of women look for leaders because you got to remember, like I said, they grew up in a church and, you know, the men left the church. Think about it. Y'all, y'all grandparents took y'all to church. Y'all ain't pay attention. But the woman, the woman followed power. But now a lot of stuff is changing where a lot of women is, you know, they, they kind of stepping up a little more. They don't mind being by themselves. That's because a lot of women now is they into finding themselves. And a lot of men is into finding themselves as well. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a that's a really interesting perspective about um, women being in the church and yeah. being driven to that leadership. I was always curious about that. Um, the leadership thing I get, you know, because traditionally, you know, the men were supposed to be the quote unquote head of the household. Right. They would make the decisions. They would provide. They would do all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, there's men out there now that have either not been introduced to that or they've completely just lost their way, you know, as far as providing that that leadership. And there's also men that have continued to do that, but Mm -hmm. their partner has been fed external shit so much to where they're just like, this motherfucker is whack. I'm out. What What do you mean by men have lost their way? I'm sorry? What do you mean by men have lost their way? So men have lost their way. So instead of leading, right, they amuse themselves on not focusing on the household. So like, it could be little things like not helping the kid with their homework, not even taking the kids to the events or um not to help create structure in the home right not even doing that they're just like out they're always out they're always doing something other than what it's also a form of coping yes yes so not being able to deal with the situation at hand they make themselves busy with video games or going out shopping or going hang out with their dudes Mm -hmm. because the house is hot yeah no that's that's a great point that's a great point. What do you think, Wise? Yeah, hold that point, though. Hold that. Hold that. Yeah, though. yeah. You gotta. I, I got. So, I gotta test for that one too. After Kenneth, because you... go ahead, Ken. Because it's not just the men lost their way. Some of them yeah, is the I... mothers who taught their sons lost their way. Because I know a kid. Hmm. His mom spoiled him to death. Matter of fact, he's he's my stepdaughter stepdaughter's boy, uh, baby daddy. They got two kids. His mm-hmm. mother spoiled the hell out this kid. Spoiled Ryan. You know, she passed away from cancer or whatever. And now he doesn't have her to spoil you. The boy don't want to work. 
he's not really doing much with the kids and all that, but his mother brought him that, that way to be spoiled. And now that she's gone, he don't know what to do. So you can blame it on the parents as well as you can blame it on men, men in general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. It's a good point too. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say men lost their way when lost their ways only because society has changed a lot of females a lot of females are not you know not doing tradition like females right now don't and right now in new york they don't give a fuck about themselves they think being the lit party girl and being outside is probably like the best thing they can do a lot of men don't look for that i don't need a female that's lit on the gram i just need you to be my partner by my side and we just do this shit together but now society has taken that away from females that have wanted to get up and do something, but they put themselves out differently because they want to show off on social media. Me, myself, not looking for that, that kind of female. So I wouldn't say men lost their way, lost their way, but it's just a lot of females is not putting themselves out there for a good one to look for or look at. Yeah, excuse me. I, I agree. I don't, I don't think right? men lost their way. I, I don't think any men lost their yeah. way. I think... I believe nah, with the just, men. I, I believe with the men. They they're gonna come at everybody left and right. Gonna come at the yeah. men because the men. A lot of men they see a lot of stuff. They understand a lot of yeah. stuff. I don't think they lost their way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But society has saying? changed though. Because you remember back in the day, we called this girl a hoe. She's crying. She's upset. Now I ain't call a girl a hoe. You just mad I ain't fucking you, motherfucker. And it, it is what it is. <laughs> no, that's no, sad, no. but that's, gets, <laughs> that's I will I will say this though. I will I will say a man will never lose his way, but a man will lose interest. Yes, mm. a big time. Let's say that. Let's say that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. see, I'll be quiet sometime, but then I'll drop a gem and then disappear on y'all for five Absolutely. minutes. But that's exactly what a man would do. A man would never lose a man will never lose his way, but he will definitely do. Lose interest, absolutely. Men, right, men, right in the dating industry, a man right now loses interest in a lot of these females because how they put themselves, how they present themselves out in the street. I don't need that loud girl and half your body showing and walking around. I don't need that. That's not. It's, I'm gonna lose interest. Like, so if you want to gain the interest back, show some intellectual stuff. You no, know, first you show me you can read or something like that. Mm. Shaniqua, Shaniqua does this thing with me where um, she tells me, Fran, these are the guys you need to be looking for, like connecting me with the, their signs and stuff. And I never really thought about that. Mm. And once I actually did start talking to the signs that she said that I'm compatible with, I'm like, I have a more flowy conversation. And I, I'm going to put myself out there. I am on a dating app. <laughs> and no, look, I don't. I have my clothes on, but it's funny when people come in my box. They're like, you know, I like your profile because you ain't got all your shit out. And I'm like, uh, thanks. I didn't know that was a compliment. <laughs> That's a hell of a compliment yeah. because I, I like, yeah. so to the left, somebody got something out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you swipe left, you see a whole city. God damn. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> nah, that ain't no allegedly, bro. You, <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting yeah, for the counter. Trust me, trust me. I was waiting for the cuck, 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 combo breaker. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. Yeah, that's what 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 that's it. She didn't want shit to do with him, but she was hungry. That's terrible. <laughs> mm. I, I actually have guys, they, they ask me that kind of shit. Like, okay, I have, not ask me, but they say, hey, I'm having this conversation, but all the girl wants to do is go out and eat. I don't need that. I need a nigga to fuck my mind first. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, exactly. Yes. Exactly. That shit definitely Feed goes both ways. Feed the mm-hmm. mind. Absolutely. A lot of people, they say what they want and they need. And when they meet somebody, they find three or four things they're interested in and mm. forget about all the other stuff. That's true. Mm. And, then, and then when they get into it, it's like, you wasn't even my type. <laughs> it's like, 
I think people, yep. people need to stand by. You need to stand by all of that. Like, I'm the type, if I don't like you, I don't like you. You got to be all, you got to be everything straight because it wouldn't make no sense. Right. Because if you're going, if you're going to be interested in someone, you know, at least get everything you want because they're going to get everything they want. And then when it don't work out, you say it's their fault. No, it's your fault. Mm-hmm. You made the choice. You, you made the attempt. Exact, exactly. Accountability. Accountability. Now, I really, it, it was a YouTuber. I can't remember his fucking name. And he said, he said it. When you go out on these dates, yo, and this guy can prove he's Superman. To you, to that girl, I'm Superman. And I show you I'm Superman, but you're not showing me your lowest lane. You're not doing anything to prove I need to be with you. So a guy could go all out and he find out later, well, she's not going all in. Yeah. So it may take a little while, but it yeah. I think no, I think you need to have these conversations in the beginning. It shouldn't even be a date. Like I, I've been I've talked to people. No, you're not my type. You're not six, you're not six two. I'm good. Like, no. <laughs> like people people's not upfront about it. That just That's like you- the, the communication no has to happen. The communication that, absolutely has to happen. And, and people have to do, you have to say what you want and what you like. Right. You know, it, you could be talking to someone like, you know what, I really like, I really like light skin or brown skin. It don't matter. That's what you like. When you yeah. go against what you, what you like, I mean, I think you know everything right then and there. I mean, before we even hang, before we even go on a date, I know everything I like right then and there. And as far as me dating females, I like short females. I'm not gonna date yeah. a female that's my height. That's stupid. <laughs> I'm you. you gotta know what you want. You gotta know what you want in community. I mean, wow. I mean but I but I, I I have friends that be like, oh, how you talk to this person, that person, how you do what you do? Cause I'm up front. First of all, I don't even care if you marry. That's not my business. You marry, not me. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm glad somebody said that shit out loud too. Yeah. I have I have those conversations up front before we exchange numbers before anything. Like mm-hmm. I don't it, it wouldn't make no sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't I, I don't believe in finding out three, four months later. I find out right then and there. Like yeah, I'm not even gonna go out to eat with you. That. I'm not even gonna go out to eat with you if I know I'm not interested. It's not mm-hmm. gonna work out. That's the one thing I can say though. Yeah. Real shit, because I'm like that. I'm up front and personal. You get all of Kenneth. You don't get like a little bit of me. You want to know who the fuck I am in the first five minutes you meet. I don't yeah. bullshit around with nobody. But when you don't find you find out later they didn't give you 100%, that's just annoying. It's really what's annoying. Later? But hold on, hold on. What's later, Kenneth? What's later? I need to know this. A, a later for me is a week. <laughs> I mean, I mean, think about it. You talking to the girl on the phone, right? Right? Y'all talking on the phone. And she telling you to hold on and she cursing the kids out or she going off. I'm not gonna talk to that girl. Some of y'all still some of y'all because because that because she's showing you the type of person she is. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, mm-hmm. like us as people, we're not paying attention to how she's even talking to her kids. Don't think later on, three, four months later, she won't curse you the fuck out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, or but, even or but, even talk. But, yeah. In that talking stage, if you ask the right questions, you will find out the red flag. You'll find that. that you're right. Right. You put you put the right questions in place. You can tell a whole story. You find out all that shit. Mm-hmm. I think okay. also too their uh, social media and stuff. Also, the, the what they post, what they talk about, it also shows and reveals their personality and who yep. they are. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I I love the one that you use Facebook as a diary. Those are the best one. You told me everything I need to know. You crazy as shit. I'm moving on. Those are the best ones. I'm skip. <laughs> That's some real ass <laughs> shit right there, yo. <laughs> yo. The first, the, 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 that first post that be like niggas ain't shit. Yep, I'm going. Oh, he said the ma- he said the magic yep. word. Sound the alarm. That, 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 that's a major red flag right there. <laughs> and then if they talking about their parents like oh you know my dad this my dad that just so you know right then and there she don't respect men like you gotta pay attention to the little to the little things cause yeah. them little things that she's saying that's telling you right then and there nah I don't wanna talk to you hmm. but the red flags depend too cause some red flags like yeah I'll fuck but I'm gone and then it'll be the other red flags like nah she'll fucking kill me I gotta leave 
So you gotta this the right questions will give you the right answers. Tell me. What would you say to somebody that isn't well versed in asking the right question? Oh shit. I don't I don't ask the right shit for us yeah. with my boys every relationship they in everyone the girl went around us all right they met us and you know they met they met Bob Bob can tell you and there was questions asked that you know that they said that she didn't really realize they was testing her, like the whole time uh, we were testing the other girl. Yeah. And then later on, when we get in the group chat or something like that, we were like, yes or no. It's basically like, yo, this is what I saw about it. I'm not sure. Da, da, da. We break down that whole shit. Mm -hmm. so, so you, you, right so you had the support system in place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've been, yeah, we've been doing that since, since 2001, breaking mm -hmm. everything down. Every girl that's been around us, we broke it down. Now nah, that bitch crazy, son. I, I don't know about her. Uh -huh. Sometimes sometimes the dudes listen, sometimes we don't. You know what I'm saying? It all depends. Has the, has the collective consensus uh, been correct? Or... I have two um, questions. That's one. I, and the second one is, um, are the people in the group, are they all still married? Uh, what's that background? Okay. Uh, all got kids except for two. One is about to get married. One is married. Uh, the one that has a kid by the girl, they both of them agree they don't want to get married, but they live together. They take the kid, they take care. Of it. It, I mean, it looks like they married, but they are. The other one is married, but the wife controls the whole shit. Um, <laughs> I mean, the only hoe I got left is my boy Andrew. My boy Andrew's a hoe, and Brian he just had trouble getting girls because he's about three hundred and twenty pounds. So. But he's losing mm. the weight, though. I, I got a question. Why? Why? Why Andrew gotta be a hoe? Because he, he <laughs> yo, yo, I love that dude. He's he's like my little brother, but he's a hoe. I ain't, but, I'm, why, this but, why, this, but why? he? But why he has to be a hoe? If he like just sleeping around, why he gotta be a hoe? Why he? Why? Because why the, is there a label? Like why is there even a label like that? He gotta be a hoe. Because the way he he's does sexually shit. liberated. It's, it, it's the way he does shit. All right. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm, I'm like, all right, you sleep around, you sleep around. It is what it is. You like sex, have the sex. But you fucking the same sisters on the on the same weekend, dude. Like, what the fuck are you that, doing, bro? Damn. But why, 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 why is he a hoe? The girls ain't complaining. All right, so first of all, can we talk about how my man fucking fella just said he's sexually liberated? Like <laughs> 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 hey, 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 first of all, he labeled himself as a hoe. That's one of the reasons why he hoe. No, that's sexually liberated shit. Let's go with it. No, I like that label. That that sounds better than being a hoe. Liberator. <laughs> He's a sexual liberator. We don't have it, to trademark certain, that it's shit. Certain shit he does that is just very hoeish. You know? Like he'll brag about, yeah, son. So I told these bitches to run a train on me, but you know they wasn't with it. Like that's the type of talk he be on. But, so I, I mean, only, and it, but the only reason why I asked that because like me and my friend we had that conversation and some people are just sexual and and depending on who oh, they're yeah. with it's okay with that person like if, it's okay with multiple people that they with so that's why I asked that's why I asked yeah. Ken, well, he, he, he definitely labeled himself as whole he I labeled myself he just, he, just, he just got whole tendencies Nah, nah, well, nah, he labeled himself a hoe. He'll tell you straight up. I call myself a retired hoe. I hung up the jerseys. Uh, this nigga, my boy Lamar, he's the same way. We all we all know what the fuck we did. So it is what it is. He says he says retired. <laughs> <laughs> that jersey, that jersey hidden somewhere. That's the that's what I like to say. It's it's hanging up in the rafters, bro. I'm in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh man i just i just hey i just had an ex i mean i and i got family members that they still doing them so i just see them as very sexually active like they may be married they may be doing their thing but i just see them as hello what y'all said sexually what sexually liberated is the sexually, magic word I mean, of the night yeah that that might just be it 
I mean, the, the woman ain't saying nothing, so, I mean, hey. All hey, right, but what about the shorties with the six kids and the six baby daddies? But what about the baby daddies with the 12 baby mamas? Right, but I mean, right. that, that nigga and time. chances. Then he got a weak pull-out game, and the nigga's off. <laughs> what if he don't want to pull out? Right, this guy's that just say, fuck right. it. What this if he happens. feels like he ain't got nothing to lose? But what, what if, if he what on if... his Nick Cannon shit? What oh, if he's on his we... Nick Cannon shit? <laughs> 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 now that's walling out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just I just believe it go both ways. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It go yeah. both like like when you get with a dude, no, you automatically no, no. know because you ask him how many kids he got. That's up to you to be to be the fifth or third or fourth baby mother. That's still on you as a woman. So I just think it just go both ways. Now you might well, you might want to say that a little no. bit louder because I mean you know, yo facts. Say that for people in the back, please. <laughs> well, what about hit him with the nuclear about, bomb, Nikwa? What about the niggas who's paying prostitutes? Oh, I mean they sex uh, they sex they sexually active. I yo, mean, we pay sexually active. They sexually liberated. He's sexually liberated, man. That's it. Right? <laughs> That's going to describe the behavior <laughs> at all. Okay, we are sexually liberated beings. Okay? Sorry. Some okay, of us enjoy that more than others. All right? <laughs> Some people like to play ball. Some people like to shoot pool. <laughs> Some niggas like to be sexually liberated. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. Get, I mean, and you. <laughs> and you get some you get some signs that's very sexually active in others like Leo's. Leo's is very sexually active. Yeah. Like like some Libra men are very sexually active. Like it's can, some signs there's some signs you, that just that's just how they are. I can tell you two Libros, Leo, Leo girls that is not sexually well, hold active up, hold like up, that. Hold up. Fuck those you two just, chicks. <laughs> you just said but you just said Leo woman but sometimes it depends on that person. Because I know real mm-hmm. women that's very sexually active, but if you're talking to them, it depends on that person. Because I oh, know geez. both male and female Leos, they got a sexual problem. <laughs> that's a fact. My mama is one. Bye. What? <laughs> no, no filter whatsoever when he said that shit. Oh, no shit. remorse. No filter. No regrets. Nah, she, I mean, we're talking about three, three baby fathers, four kids. Yeah, that's, that's, that's sexually liberated, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she's a Leo. This man, B. She's a Leo. I mean, listen, our parents made tragic mistakes, man. But we're just living, so you know, we gotta be all right with that. I told you, Max. We're from that age, bro. We we are representation of therapy. Like each of us have at least. 12 different cases in our brain of, of child neglect and shit like that. So we <laughs> just go on with the conversation now. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, you might as well That's continue. Now. Nerve, you know? This is the air out, yo. Right. You haven't That's really said anything. I have a list here of sexually active zodiac signs. Aries, Pisces, Libra, and Taurus. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> 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 I felt like she just called me a hoe. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nah, nah, you ain't listening, bro. I forgot about the Taurus, yeah. Yeah, Taurus is yeah. They are fire. I'm Aries. Yeah, Aries. I'm a Taurus. No wonder why she be telling people buck up. <laughs> Let's let's do that another time, Max. Definitely, we go into the signs. I like having fun. Yeah, with that. nah. I yeah, talked to Fel- I talked to Felton earlier today. We had an intellectual jamboree, and uh, one of the things we were talking about is having an episode where it's like really philosophical based. Like we're talking horoscopes. We're talking. Um, what's that joint you told me about? Human design. Yo, human design. I want everybody. To take a peek at that, oh. man. Human design. If you're a part of like, if you like spirituality and like the zodiacs and numerology, Chinese zodiac and all that stuff, human design is a like pretty much like a footprint of life for you. Like it <laughs> gives you very much clarity. Like no, nah, it's not a book. Zodiac it's um, a cock. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, I was born the year oh. of the dragon, so I know. Oh. So, <laughs> oh shit. 
So yeah, so basically, um, human design is basically like four different like elements into like um, into the human design. There are like uh, generators, there's projectors, and then there's manifestors, mm. and then there's manifestors and generators. So those are like pretty much the four profiles you can be in. And it makes a lot of sense because I'm a projector, so I don't I don't really have any energy to give out. I just pretty much see what I see from the oversight, and I just put my two cents in. So I just did Max's um profile. Max turned out to be a manifesting generator because I told him about what he did with the with the with the Zoom. I said you manifested it. We talked about it. You manifested it, and then you generated it, and then you made it. The show is like 99.9 percent .9 Max. Like, yeah. myhumandesign.com yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah you can use those you can you can use one of those any of those are, um, free ones they'll give you pretty much like what your profile is and okay. I suggest everyone take a look at it because yeah, like my human design I don't know yeah. none of my ex's zodiac signs bro oh shit I don't even think I remember their birthdays I'm at the I'm gonna I'm gonna slide up in the put in the bag <laughs> So it's like a personality analysis. Yeah, yeah. like my human designs. Like you use uh, myhumandesign.com. Can you see mine? Put that in the chat, bro. I'm April 30th. Can somebody I'm gonna do that. Hold on, I'm gonna do it right now. I got you. Uh, uh, hold on. Yeah. And he's who's, a whole liar. Okay. April 4th, Kenneth. You're April 4th? Mm-hmm. Oh shit. Welcome to the diamond. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Oh my God! I never, I never mm -hmm. even heard of that. See, I, I yeah, go who's for first? But see, but see, I go off for of signs where, you know, around the time I was eighteen to twenty, let's say twenty-one, I just dated all the signs, and mm. they have everybody is different, but everybody has similar traits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I kind of put it together. Like that's how I kind of like read people. Besides me listening to myself, because I'm a I'm a March Pisces. So besides me listening to myself and what I know, like it's mostly when your birthday. Like he just said he April 30th. He off the hook. He got a mouth on him. He off the hook. But he's hey, very he's he's very he look look, he's very sexual because he's an Aries slash Taurus. Even though he gonna say he's a Taurus, he has two different signs. But some people no, I'm not. see, and some it's just, people would it's, say it's that just too. Taurus. It's just Taurus because yeah, the the cutoff line was what April twenty first. But see, that's but that's what I said. I don't You're close read enough it. to that sign. Actually, though. yeah, but it, it's not even reading it. If you talk to other April Taurus that's like you, they have Aries and Taurus ways. Now, if you talk to a May Taurus, they have Taurus ways. Mm. Is it? There's a difference, but it's not what oh. you're reading. It's not. I don't read it. I put people together. Like I'm sure Kenneth got a lot of traits of. A couple of my cousins because they're april 28th 29th versus mm -hmm. having some friends that's may 4th may 3rd so if yeah. you kind of put that together like just think about your friends and family that is around them signs because what we're actually reading that was a thousand years ago that shit that shit is not now that shit <laughs> is not an actual that's not actually even pinpointing how people are raised that's the other thing so if you actually get to know people and kind of put them together, that's what you actually learn. Like, hold on, everybody's different, but they have similar traits and they signs. I don't see nothing wrong with being stubborn, lovable, and want to put your penis on a girl's shoulder. I don't see nothing wrong with none of that shit. Hey, nobody, nobody said it was wrong. Nobody said it was okay. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Felton, I pulled mine up. It said that I'm a generator. Yeah, that means you just you're just a workaholic. Huh? Yeah, it means you're just a workaholic. No, a workaholic. Okay. <laughs> what, was, what was mine? No, let me see. You got it yours. I put it on the chat. Oh, well, I know is there's definitely a difference between a March Pisces and a February. Of course. Yeah, I'm a That's February it. Pisces. Because I'm a March. I'm a March. I mean, I, I, I'm technically Kevin, March, though. I'm like two days. My my birthday is March 1st. Yes, yeah, mine's yes. the 27th. And here's the 20th. So basically, he's an Aries. He's a he's a Pisces Aries. So the 27th is a Pisces Aries. Mm. No, 27th of February. 
Oh, 27 February. Oh, so you're Aquarius. Yeah. And that's why they're different, because he's an Aquarius Pisces. Mm. That's what year were you born? Yeah, because Kev's birthday was right after mine. Literally, like, yep. I think mine's like the second to last day of February. I think it's like two days. Yeah, yeah y'all like, like, yeah. like a day or two days apart. Yeah. yeah, because I just beat out <laughs> being a damn leap year baby. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You almost you hit right that there. February 29th, dog. Yeah, dog. <laughs> oh, oh, so many days of February. But he got but he got Aquarius in him. So he may have you may have like Aquarius ways. Mm. And you a little yeah. bit more your the February ones is more sexual than the March one. The March ones kind of think about stuff. The only thing with the March men versus the February men, the what the March men, they know what they be getting themselves into. Mm. And they still do it. The February ones, <laughs> they just don't they just don't give a fuck because they got the Aquarius <laughs> face. Yo, that's a fact though. She ain't never lie though. That's a definitely <laughs> a fact. That's, that's definitely no. a fact. But but I, I think I believe with the March, the March ones, we the, a lot of people didn't have that type of mother or father to tell them, like, nah, listen to what you say. You already know. See, I had that. But the men needed the men needed more, you know, because they know stuff. The March ones, the men, they know stuff. And they still, they just, they kind of be back and forth and they get the benefit of the doubt. And all the men do is they look for booty and that's it. And they rock it with the shit. <laughs> We're getting off of this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this right now. No, I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious about that. Um, because uh, my birthday is coming up in three weeks, roughly three weeks. So when I'm a Libra. I'm an October Libra. When your birthday? October fourth. Oh, okay, so you're a straight Libra. Oh. You are you. That's it. You're a straight male Libra. Straight, no. straight and narrow. Balance of the straight balance. Male Libra. You got that very smart intellectual. The only thing is, for some reason, y'all be picking the wrong woman. I don't know what it is. I just don't know. God Almighty. That is that is definitely my Achilles heel, right Yo, there. Yeah, I'm out, man. I'm dropping the mic. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll be I'm the first one. I'll be the first ears. one to admit to that because I've always gone off of like, I mean, I was an I was an idiot when I started dating. I started dating at twenty. Like I was an idiot. Like I was going way left. Like there was one person that had really good potential, and I fucked that up for somebody else. And then that person turned around and burned me, got knocked up by a dude, tried to abort it. And then I've been on this pendulum cycle of fucking up ever since. You know what I mean? Like picking the wrong people. You know, now I'm just like, it is what it is. I'm just focusing on me right now. Once you get to that point, because we all get to that point, whether we want to believe it or not, once you get to that point, it's more of not necessarily picking the wrong people, but basically you just kind of wanted to be with somebody just because you don't want to be by yourself. Nobody wants to be alone. I understand that. But you don't want to beat yourself up neither because that's one of them things where you start questioning yourself and yeah. you shouldn't do that. Yeah. And I've, and I've done that. I've done that many, 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 many times, like without saying many, too many more times. And I still did it. <laughs> yeah, but you that know what? was that was the mindset that I was in before I started to really like dive into my my mental health and my spiritual well being and all of that stuff. You know what I mean? Because every even when I separated from Trish, I was like, "Yo, am I not fucking desirable?" My thing is like, when it comes down to that type of stuff, like. Before, you know, I was, you know, uh, kind of fixed, so to speak. As soon as I got my, my, my shit together and I started to go through all of my, my sessions and go through my, my, my inner self and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I sat back and replayed everything I was doing and I thought it was so stupid that I will always blame myself for every relationship that I failed in. Like, that's not how that happens. And that's not how it goes neither because I would really sit there and I've actually sat 
when one of my friends had told her, I was like, yo, was it really my fault that Shorty did what she did? And she was like, fuck no. You sound stupid as hell. Yep. Like, Shorty let me have it. Like, she really did. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it turned into one of the things, like, everybody knows that every relationship is not perfect and everything like that. What you shouldn't do is take the blame and the blunt force of most of it. That's not fair to you. Mentally, it's not. Because mm-hmm. as soon as you start questioning yourself, that's when you start really saying, like, oh, maybe I'm not really good for nobody. Yep. That's bullshit, too. That's bullshit. Yeah, because you're speaking. That's why sometimes you're speaking you got to stay out of your own head. You got to keep the right people around you that's going to steer you in the right direction, that's going to keep you moving. Mm-hmm. Remember, everybody's not for everybody until you find that somebody. I get that. Yeah. I'm not out here rushing to find nobody neither. Yeah, yeah. I'm focusing on my kids. I'm focus- focusing on keeping everything afloat with me and my children right now, keeping a positive you know, relationship with my kid's mother and stuff like that. That's the only thing I'm focused on right now. Right. Because even taking a break from dating for like a whole year and getting into a relationship with somebody who wasn't even figured out their damn self, that shit kind of pushed me back a little bit. Yeah. I refuse to take the blunt force of that failed relationship too. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. This is a new version of me that's not going to sit back and be like, oh, that was my fault too. Nah, fuck that. Mm Mm-mm, No. No, we wasn't jealous, and that's it. But I, I believe, I believe you do gotta listen to yourself because you be absolutely, nice. yeah, absolutely. The thing is, one thing about the Pisces man is way too nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 a, that's you, 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 you see them, and you like, nah, she gonna change. I'm gonna help her out, yeah. And that, that's where it's like, that's a no-no. She need to be on your level, point blank, period. Yeah. Yep. And that's a, and that's and that's for that's for a lot of men, but especially especially the Pisces men because they be knowing like they gonna take advantage of y'all like point blank period. Yeah. So, and see, see me, I've run into that, and it's it's part of it's part of the message that I dropped today on uh, Walk and Talk with the Rune, and I talked about blind eyes re- seeing the signs. Originally, I was going to call it seeing the red flags, but then I changed it to seeing the signs to make it a little bit more broad. And my one of my quirks is I haven't really been a great judge of character, especially when it came to partners. Right. So I would go in thinking, well, this person likes this, this and this. This is her, This is it. I'm going in for it. And then come to find out the red flags is like Tyson punch. Boom. And, you know, I didn't get into the habit of really engaging in conversation, really asking the right questions and all of that shit. You know what I mean? And I kept making the same mistake over and over and over again. And the the result would be the same. So in a sense, it was kind of like I was the joker in the dark night. I was insane as fuck thinking that, oh, maybe I'll get that right one. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, that wasn't it. Even with even with my my ex, you know what I'm saying? Like, I still have respect for her. I still have love for her and everything. And she's the mother of my kids. That's always going to be in existence. But from a romantic perspective, you know, I went into that thinking, well, she does this and this. And this. It's OK. And, you know, it's kind of like what Kenneth said earlier. You kind of dismiss yeah. some of the the what you see or interpret as the gray flags. You know what I'm saying? You just kind of like, eh, it's not. That's not going to be a problem. You got to, you got to, you got to definitely discipline yourself from junk. Yes. And, and when you do that, that's when you kind of align with yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, when you just dismiss this, that, and the third, like, that's when later on you're gonna see everything go wrong. Right. Right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, for me, for me, one of the lessons that that I'm learning myself is the art of discernment you know what i mean really giving a deep like evaluation of the people that i'm in contact with and even the people that i associate with now like i look at them closely and i'm like is this going to continue to be a person that is going to serve me as i evolve or do i have to cut them loose right you know what i mean like i can't carry everybody if someone wants at this point now if i'm dating somebody and Someone feels as though this isn't right for them. I would prefer you communicate that shit with me. But if they dip and they do side sidebar shit, then that's on them. That's not necessarily on me. You know, 
I've had it happen. I've been I've been on the receiving end of that, and I've been the perpetrator of that. You know. So. Yeah, we don't have enough time on this damn Zoom call to tell you how I've been a perpetrator for a lot of that shit. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm proud of that shit neither, because that shit helped me, you know, understand what what not to do and stuff like that. I mean. I do feel bad for some of it, but not all of it. I'm gonna keep it. A, I'm gonna keep it a stack with you, like. Mm -hmm. But as as a 40 year old man now, I'm just like looking at myself from a you know a broader view. It was like a lot of stuff could have been handled differently. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know that helped me get to where I'm at now. So I had to do all of that stuff to get to where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. Right. You cursing? Who you cursing at, Kelly? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I'm sitting here thinking about old relationships and all that and i know where i fucked up i know where i fucked up and i know where they fucked up when the set went wrong like one girl cheated on me i never blame my fucking self for the, the thing that popped in my head i was pissed and then i'm like fuck it i'm gonna go out here and get some bitches myself then and i kept moving so i don't remember ever blaming myself yeah some people could move on faster than others though some people gotta really sit there and fucking soaking, fucking wallowing that shit. Like that's how some people cope. Yeah. Everybody can't just be like up onto the next hole. It ain't like that with certain people. You gotta be able to be like, damn, that's fucked up. You gotta have your moment. You gotta have that fucking whatever you call that shit, and then you gotta move on from it. Simple. Your moment of realization. For sure. Absolutely. That's what it was. Thanks, friend. <laughs> I totally related with you on that thing, you know, when you're talking about like blaming yourself for the, like, for all the breakups or whatever had occurred in the situation. Yeah. I mean, I think like when we get to that space, like you said, of, of ownership, it just helps us to make better decisions. And then like when you have people like Shaniqua around too, she's helpful. <laughs> That's it. No, it ain't nothing wrong with Call it Shaniqua and be like, yo, Shaniqua, yo, real shit, man. I'm feeling like this. And then she hit you with some good ass truth. Because this is what I try to do to people, too. Because I do this at work, too. People always be on some what was me shit. So then when I hit them with some real shit, they like, damn, you ain't have to say it like that. I'm like, but I know how I delivered it. You're going to take it how you want to. If I wasn't your friend, I wouldn't tell you the way that I did. Simple as that. That's why when Shaniqua say the shit that she say, she mean that shit and it come from a good place. Yeah. Pisces, we Pisces. Yo, that's it's a Pisces thing. It's a why I hate that shit. Hey, bro, it comes to me, bro. For real, I hate, that shit. I hate it because people ask me my opinion, and I'm like, I'll be like, do you really want it? Like, do you really want? I give them, the, I always give them the disclaimer, like, yo, do you really want my advice? Yo, so because if I, if I say it, yo, if I say what I need to say, you're about, you might be a little hurt by it. So I'm just not yo, like, fell. Like, no fell, no bullshit. Look. Kev, that's the Aquarius Pisces. See how me yep. Aquarius Pisces just go mm -hmm. in. We don't care about how you feel. We and the, and the crazy Pisces. shit. <laughs> I told somebody that yo, fell. I did the same shit. I was like, yo, do you really want me to tell you what's really going on? Yeah. I was like, bottom line, shorty. I said, bottom line, this nigga been cheating on you since you've been with him. This nigga don't give a fuck about you. He do everything he do because he don't care. Shorty stopped talking to me for three months because of that. But you was right. Yo, she me? came back three months later. Was like, yeah, you was right. I said, I know I was right. Straight cocky shit. I'm like, duh. Wow. <laughs> Stupid. I'm like, I'm a man first. I know how a man gonna move, and everything he doing, he moving like a snake too. So I know how he move because I used to move like a snake. He doing the same shit I did. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, you not listening. <laughs> I don't never come off disrespectful when I try to tell people about certain things. I try to tell, I always was told, like, if you really fuck with somebody, you don't sugarcoat shit. You have to be able to tell them exactly what they need to know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. People need that now more than anything because they'll take advice from fucking TV shows and shit. Like, that shit ain't going to help you. <laughs> it, it's, listen, if... If I'm doing something wrong and you my friend, man, and you've been fucking with me for this long and you don't tell me, you don't give a fuck about me. You just a yes man. Like, you just like, yeah, you right. Because, yeah, fuck all that. Nah, I need to be told the, the truth and nothing but the goddamn truth if I'm giving you the same thing. Yeah. And that's why I love my circle, yo. That's what they do. 
Yeah, trust me, I know about Lamar. He might be the most truthful motherfucker that I that I know that get on my damn nerves. So you would say, and and this is a sec, a great segue into kind of like my next question. What you're saying is your support system holds you accountable for your actions or lack thereof. Yeah, as as a support, you're supposed to. Yeah. Oh yeah, mine's definitely do. They ain't yo, Kevin. You know Lamar. That nigga don't give a fuck. If I fuck up, he lets me know I fucked up. Because that's how you gotta do it. Oh. If you sit there and see your friend doing something that you know good and damn well he shouldn't be doing, and you allow this shit, then all you doing is enabling his behavior. That's all you doing. Mm-hmm. True shit. You're not really my friend if I'm sitting here. If you know I'm out here cheating on my wife. And you know, I, she 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 good by me and all of that shit. And you just like, yeah, man, go just do you. Mm-hmm. I would expect the real friend to be like, yo, Kev, you really need to, you know, take a step back and really think about what the fuck you're doing because you're doing some shit that you know. And she did it to you, nigga, you'll be broken as fuck. Because that's the funny thing about being a man. A man could go out there and do whatever the fuck he want and don't feel shit. But as soon as a woman do it to him, that motherfucker like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how you know the classic. truth is that's, that's, how you know you know. that's how you know that's when you know it's that's legit. how you know because it's, it's true that's how you know it's true i mean i as a man i've gone through that it's like yo i'm i'm like no, i'm gonna tell you why i'm gonna tell you why it's a different feeling it's because when you're when you're a man and some other man conquered your woman it, it, it's a emotional it's like gutless feeling it, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but that's really mm-hmm. what it is. Like, is that's it, your ego? Yeah. it really, is. it really would it because we were possessive. So it's like, yo, that's that was me. Yeah, like <laughs> that was that was that, that, that was me. That was me with um, with my ex that I separated with. You know, um, the first time we separated, she ended up getting a dude and was boo booed up with him, like within days. And we were still living together at the same time. So I was just like, there was a time I remember where um, I had stepped out to do whatever to spend some time with myself and shit because I I was always, majority of the time I was with the kids or whatever. And uh, she had came back with him or whatever. And, you know, I came home and I felt awkward as fuck. And I lived there. Wait. And did you say you live with them? So no, I didn't live with him. I lived with her still while she was dating another dude. Like we were still in the same house, but we were separated. Right. So it was pretty much like we were roommates for the you know to cover down on the rent and you know the utilities and all of that shit. So how was that for you emotionally? Oh, emotionally, I was fucked up. I know you was this. You had to be distraught, bro. That shit hurt. I was fu- like, I left, like when I came back and I saw how happy she was with him, yeah. I was fucking devastated. Like immediately before the tears could fall from my face, I went right back out that door because I oh. felt awkward. And then to make it even worse, my kids were playing with his daughter oh. and it made me feel like I was dismissed from the family. So I exited and I got out and I, I I don't even remember what the fuck I did. I took a long ass fucking walk. And then I came back later and he had left. You know what I'm saying? And, and I didn't speak to her that the rest of that night, like I wasn't angry. I wasn't bitter. I was fucking broke, like broken. Dang. You know what I mean? And that whole that that first that first part of the separation that first separation was probably the hardest thing for me to fathom. I mean, the second one wasn't much easier when she hooked up with her fucking work hubby. And I get it; she means well because she talks to me about the situation. And in the back of my headspace, I'm like, regardless of what I suggest you do, it's your choice to make. You know, at the end of the day, I want you to be in a good place. I want you to have your own spot and not have to worry about any kind of bullshit, but that's not my place. It's not my place. But But when I found out, when I found out that she was hooking up with him, like I denied the fact that them two were talking, but there was little breadcrumbs, those red flags that was screaming at me 
And but you was ignoring every last one of them. I was ignoring every single one of them. I was like, nah, she ain't gonna do that. She ain't that way. She ain't that way. No. Like, there was a time, what really, what really hit me with that was there was a time, it was our, it was supposed to be our 10 year anniversary being married. And mm. over the last 30 days leading up to that, I created a poster out of all of the like, like throwback pictures and all of this shit, everything that we were up until that point. So I put like, man, it sounds cheesy as fuck, but I, I took out like, I cut a map out of like Kansas. I was stationed in Kansas when we met and all of the kinds of shit, right? So pictures of the kids, all that nice little poster. And I presented it to her that morning. When I tell you she looked at that poster that I busted my ass to put together and she didn't even fucking acknowledge it, that's when I knew. This is 10 years? After 10 years. Damn. And Damn. what I did that was fucked up, cause you know, since we talking about accountability, I'm gonna own up to my shit. Where I fucked up in the marriage is I emotionally cheated because I wasn't getting what I felt I deserved as a married man. I wasn't getting the intimacy. She would always dismiss the sex. I was fucking busting my ass. And I'm not the type of person to really demand, yo, you gonna fuck me tonight. Like, no, I don't demand the shit. But I'm like, that's part of the no, we were responsibility. That's, like, that's, 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 a, that's a connection thing. Like, you know what you I mean? Gotta, it's, you got caught? Say what? You got caught cheating? Man, so he here's the you're thing. Emotionally, emotionally, I was flirting with other people. I didn't engage in the oh. physical aspect oh. of it, but okay. it's it was. Still, he basically it, was getting was what she wasn't left. giving him from somebody else. Right, but, right. It was still going. Basically, left. Max was fishing and throwing the fish back in the water. But 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 the question was my my question is she found out. She did find out. She did find out. And this is when you knew she was already cheating when you were doing that. So I was doing it before she ended up like dating the, messing around with the other dude so i was doing that beforehand okay. that, that, my action basically my actions for the most for for i can't even say the whole part of it because there was some underlining issues with her that she alluded to when we separated the second time and we said that was going to be it because for her she was like she wanted to live life for herself like that's how she masked it she wanted to start living life by herself and figuring things out on her own as an adult and all this other stuff. And I'm like, if you want to be a better person, then I support that 110%. I want you to be better, you know, mm -hmm. but she got hooked up with this dude that doesn't serve her. And I busted my ass <laughs> over 10 years. And yes, I emotionally cheated, but I emotionally cheated. And I saw it as justified. I emotionally cheated because, like, I wasn't getting what I needed. And you knew that that was a thing for me. And, like, it still wasn't happening. Somebody's getting fucked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, So let me ask you a question, though. What's up? So with all of this stuff that was going on, with her doing all of this stuff with old boy and you doing all your emotionally cheating stuff, was there conversations being had at all to communicate any of this? Or was it just being ignored and everybody was just doing their own thing? So mm, when- That's a good question. So the emotional cheating was when we were still together. That was my fault. I yeah. took ownership for that. But he asked, but did you even have a talk with her? Did we have a conversation with... while- before, before, before you even started doing all of that, was there conversations that should have been had or or have been had to avoid that? Right. Yeah. That's what I'm now, saying. Yeah. Now, great question. So I will admit that we didn't have like full blown conversations about it. However, I would mention that like I did I'd throw little hints out there, but I didn't have the direct then execute like you know we need to talk about our intimacy. Like we're fucking missing the mark. Like we didn't have that conversation. And that and that's and that's something that through this whole thing, 
that yeah. everybody should hear and know. You need to have that conversation. Absolutely. Don't this, be like this me. Is what, mm. this, is, this is what leads stuff to what it is. Yep. You need to have that conversation. Yep. Don't be like me. Don't be like me. Well, you can't say that, but we all go through our experiences. <laughs> you yeah. gotta go yeah. through I don't yours. mean I mean yeah. going through it, it was one of the hardest things of my life. Aside from the shit that I went through in 2018, but that's a that's something completely separate. But like I don't regret the experience of it. And honestly, like me and her, our relationship has become a lot better with close friends. You know what I mean? So if she has some shit, she comes to me, I give her the real. If I have some shit, I talk to her, she gives me some advice and, and it is what it is, you know what I mean? Especially for the kids, we're good. But from a romantic perspective, like that, that went away. You still live with you? No, 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 no. Nope. Gotcha. Mm -mm. She comes to visit, obviously, to see the kids and stuff like that. And sometimes she'll like crash on the couch or whatever, which I don't mind, it's fine. We ain't fucking or nothing like that, but like, at the end of the day, fucking. Hell no. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> that ain't wow, happening. I like how she snuck that in there too. Uh -huh. She's, uh -huh. She snuck that right in there. Real quick. Uh huh. No, I, not that. Wow. Nah. Oh shit. But it, it, but not nah, true story though. Like that, that experience kind of it. it if, if that experience wouldn't have happened i wouldn't be in the mindset that i am today like that separation was the kick in the dick to get me to really start looking at things differently because first separation i was bawling my fucking eyes out every single day i was heartbroken second separation i was like no something needs to give i need to dig into myself and see how I can go about overcoming this you definitely and getting can. better so I don't run into this rut again. You I mean, know? the first thing when you explained the whole situation, I, like, my first thought was, like, damn, somebody needs to get their ass whooped. Yeah. Yeah. And then my ass healthier mindset, my <laughs> then my healthier mindset is, like, wow, it really takes a lot of strength uh, emotional strength to be able to have those conversations and still be emotionally like deficient. Yeah, yeah, that shit was. I wouldn't. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Like, I wouldn't risk separation on anybody. Like, the emotional damage that it can deal. You know, especially when you're already not. Like you as an individual, like you're already not in that mindset to handle it. Yeah. And then you're not just dealing with just yourself, you're dealing with the other person also. And the other person is also, you know, not in that right frame of mind. You know what I mean? To look at it constructively. You know, look at it this way. At the end of the day, when it comes down to it, if you have kids with this individual, the only thing you could do with these people is be the best co-parent you could be. Kill them with kindness, because if you sit there and you think ill will things, that's going to affect your livelihood as well. Yep. That's going to fuck with your karma. That's going to fuck with your, your, your positivity. That's going to fuck with just you in general. Mm -hmm. I walk around this motherfucker. I smile on everybody's face when I walk around here. I'm nice to every motherfucking body. I'm not fucking up my karma for nobody. I'm going to tell you that shit off the rip. That's some real ass shit. You know what fucked me I, up? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Can I... Maybe I need to start doing that because I curse everybody out. <laughs> yeah, man. You need to take a page from your brother. <laughs> Yo. Okay. Go ahead, friend. Nah, go ahead. So, um... Max, back to your point, like when you saw him playing with, you saw the kids playing with his daughter, like yeah. that brought me back to a space where I heard, I overheard my daughter having a conversation with their stepmom mm -hmm. saying, oh, I love you, mom. And I'm like, bitch, what? <laughs> mom? <laughs> like, mom? <laughs> bitch, that's my fucking title. That's my shit. 
Damn. And I was like, yes, I cried. Yeah. I cried because I felt like she did not, that was sacred. I felt like that's a sacred title for me yeah. and my children. Like, bitch, you didn't push them fucking kids out your pussy. I did. Yeah. And you don't deserve that. And plus, she was the other woman. Mm -hmm. So I, I had all kind of bitches up in my head. I'm like, fuck you to the fullest. <laughs> Yeah. So, but I had to come to a space where, like, the kids, the kids' love can be so expansive. Yeah. And they're the ones that taught me that, like, they can still love me and still have another connection like that. Right. Right. And so I had to, I don't know how and when I came to that point, but mm -hmm. my brain was like, don't fucking call that bitch that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you now. I'm never getting to that point. Let my daughter call somebody else dad. I'm fucking him up and then I'm gonna beat her ass. I don't give a fuck. The hell? <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Oh no, no, no. It ain't no allegedly. I'm telling you what I'm gonna do. Fuck that. I ain't, I ain't, <laughs> oh, man, I'm not that emotionally make strong. Sure you, make sure you clip that out, cause man, he he gonna get himself in all types of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Now we ain't trying to have you on. We ain't trying to have you on Fox News, Ken. We ain't trying to have none of that. Well, now y'all can see the fucking difference between me and my fucking brother. Y'all can see that now. <laughs> y'all never seen that before. Nah, them tourists. Y'all the lucky. Y'all lucky. Y'all lucky. Didi ain't on here, man. Man, listen. Man, listen, Didi. Listen. I mean, go to the next question. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God, man. All right. So let me let me ask this question. Right. So the second that, you know, the title of this is relationship killers and situationships. Right. Why? do people settle for situationships and by situationships i mean they know this person is not of benefit to them it's not helping them grow but they stay there and it remains stagnant why the fuck do people stay in situations like that because in some in some ways they do it's just maybe a way that you don't know. And they complain about the ways that they don't, but in some ways they do. Some females ain't even going to meet admit he give good sex. Mm. Sometimes I, it's, just, it's just the sex, but mm -hmm. they're I, not going to admit that. You know, some guys I, may I not admit. That. Some guys I may not that. admit, you know what, she this, she that, but she cooks, she cleans, she, she well, or she may just wash clothes, but then again, she give good sex. Yo, that, that, that's that's I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because I got a boy who he says the same thing. Shorty cooks, she cleans, she does all that. She's great with the kids, but the chick is fucking psycho. Like she goes <laughs> way over. Like one time they went to uh, a track down in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And he he's introducing her to it was a couple of girls that ride they they actually do the track a couple of guys or whatever they with they boyfriends and when she introduced them she just flipped out so you fucking these fat bitches <laughs> like yo what what the fuck like they obviously there with they man but she went off to the point he had to bring her back to Maryland because he embarrassed her then she thought he went back to the track. But he called me like, yo, Ken, told me what happened. He was like, yo, I need to go back down and go get my bikes. Will you come with me? So I did. When we got there, the cops was there because she called them and said he's selling drugs in the track and all this other shit. That bitch is psycho. But yet, he keeps going back to her because she fucked good, she cooks, she cleans, she does all that shit. <laughs> mm. The psycho ones are, are, are... So basically, bottom line is a lot of people stay in these situationships, as you called it, is just strictly for... Sexual liberation? Because that's what it sounds like. Sexual liberation. Also, wait. I know one girl who's in that shit, and she just don't want to be alone. I was mm. going to say that. Yeah, you get that. Mm. You get that emotional too. connection. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, you get that, too. Yeah, because, I mean, I was going to... I spitballed a couple of things. Um, no knowledge of 
self-worth, um, trauma. Mm -hmm. Trauma be, can be a reason why they remain there. Um, Felton brought this up. I, I, Felton and Mike, one of the two of y'all brought this up. The family's already made. Like a marriage can be a situationship. And there's people that will stay there for the integrity of the family to keep the family together. You and, know that's, I mean? and that's crazy because all I all I do is just make it worse. Like yeah. some yeah. people are like, oh, I'm with I'm with him because of the kids, or I'm with her because of the kids. Right. And that does that does nothing but make it worse because you know the kids see that. They feel that energy, yeah. they see all that. Yeah. Like I have, Max, I think you were seeing it in the military because I know a couple of people who got married for the benefits yes. and more money, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. And the situation goes left real quick after that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they, they stay married for seven years and then they decide, oh, well, I want a divorce. That wife take 50%. You stay married seven years. Military's like, she get 50. Shit. Wow. Regardless. What a game plan. What a game plan. What a game plan. Regardless, you know, seven is that magic number of death when it comes to marriages, sadly, you know. Because some people don't, like, some people are used to the uh, drama, too. Like, sometimes they think their version of healthy or normal is a situationship, whatever that mm. definition might be for them. Right. That's a That's a great point. You know, some people live for the drama of it all. You know what I mean? Because the, it, to them, like you said, to them, it's this is where I feel most comfortable. Like, the, look at upbringing, look at background. Like, this is yeah. what I'm used to. I'm used to disorder. I'm used to chaos. I'm used to being yelled at and mistreated. So when I come across said person, that is actually treating me different from that, I don't feel comfortable. So I'm gonna find a way to sabotage this mm. and get with somebody that makes me feel safe, even though it's not really safe. You know what I mean? Like it's- yeah. <clears throat> I told, I was, with, I was with somebody for a couple months and I told Shaniko, I was like, bro, I don't know about this dude. And I kept telling her the same damn thing. I knew what the hell the answer was, but the nigga could fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Told you. Yeah. Sexual liberation. Good looking, fella. <laughs> Good looking, fella. <laughs> Good looking. I'm about to put these niggas on as soon as I get to work on Sunday. No, nah, but no, nah, no. Nah, but like, all right. So even though he could fuck, that wasn't the thing that kept me there. Like I said earlier, mm -hmm. it was um, at some point I had to like really get to a medium with myself. Like, hey, do you still want to sit here and have this like emotional disconnection, mm -hmm. or are you okay with you know just fucking them? And I just like ah, uh, I got to a space where I just didn't want to participate in that. Yeah, and I just let it go. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, you know, kudos to you for doing that. That's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, like, especially if there's, like, a lot of time involved. Like, you've built this bond with said person for, say, years or whatever. You know, it could be anything. It, can, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be time, but, like, you have that bond as odd as it seems. You know what I mean? And then you you try to cut cut it off. It's almost like symbiotic in a sense. You know? Yeah. I didn't build the relationship that long to have that kind of connection because I already knew, like, intrinsically I knew that he wasn't um, the one for me to continue to spend time with. Mm -hmm. But when he put that thing on me, I was just like, oh, let me think. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's because that, that's what it was. Like, he backed that up. Yeah. My man was clapping them cheeks, and that's all she was thinking about. She, really knew she wasn't going to build nothing with old boy. But that nigga was fucking power driving in her shit. She was like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Like, <laughs> but 
it, it's it's that type of shit. Like, yeah, you you could tell within the first couple minutes whether you're gonna see yourself with this person for a certain amount of time or not. Mm-hmm. That first conversation is everything. That first meetup is everything. Yeah. yeah. First impression. First impression. It, it is definitely impression. everything. Yeah. But why yeah. why we find it so difficult to pair bond? And why why is long term pair bonding such a difficult task to obtain? Uh, could you repeat that again? I didn't hear you clearly. So pair bonding, I'm just saying like why we why as a people, like we always have the difficulty pair bonding. We always have like why we can't get to these long term relationships. And why is such a like a long term relationship such a hard thing to accomplish nowadays? Because people, oh, because people don't people don't know who they are and they don't know what they want. You need to yep. get with someone who know who they are and know what they want at the end yep. of the day. Yep. And people is not real with they show. That's it. Yeah, because everybody should know what they want, but they really sit there and just be like, man, I don't really know if I really want this or not. Okay, so you either you sure you're not. My thing is, I know exactly what the hell I want. Mm-hmm. Is this do I want it from that person though? Yeah. Right. And and, yeah. and people and people don't want to hurt people's feelings. You yes. know, a lot of people that's that, that you know, so so that's mm-hmm. why I'm I'm a big firm believer in if you're not a Pisces or a Gemini or a Leo. <laughs> I'm good. I don't want to deal with you. You <laughs> got me on that shit too. It's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> for me, you want that? You want because she all because she knows exactly what she wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she'll tell you to your face what she wants. <laughs> and if you sit there, you either gonna reciprocate it the wrong way or the right way. Right. But you, but you, you know the other thing. Like I said, a lot of people they don't want to hurt people's feelings. And they're not being true. They're not being true with themselves. Where it's not, you can't think of it as hurting somebody's feelings. Like you got to think about hurting their feelings when you continue to deal with them. Yes. And then, and then when stuff happens later on, you going off. That's hurting their feelings more than you letting them know up front. Like mm. you know, this is what I want, or I don't know. A lot. Of, you're not gonna get a lot of people that say they don't know. That nobody's gonna say they don't know. They they gonna be like you know what yeah I do want a relationship and they'll do that knowing damn well that's not what they want yeah yeah but how far would you take that though would you take that down the road by having kids and having a marriage and all of that knowing no, damn well not, she didn't want to last start I mean you get honestly you get a lot of women who do that I mean I meet a lot of I, I, that, that's my question that's my get, question too that's my main question is like why do, why hop off the bandwagon now we already did all of this established all of this and all of a sudden. Yo, one day you're like, yo, I don't want to do this no more. But it's not, it's not but it's it's not just one day. Is you wasn't it's looking election. at the signs. You wasn't paying attention to the signs. You because know, over time you'll start to notice a shift in a different like mood and attitude. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Nobody's yeah. paying attention to the signs in the beginning, but you do get some women who is gonna fake it till they make it. Like they you do get that. You get them to have, they have kids, they have a happy family, all that stuff. They not happy. So most of the time, you just got to pay attention to that. Look at their facial expressions when you say certain things. And and it goes back to communication, too. Right. Because if you're not talking, ain't nobody no mind readers around here. If you're not trying to communicate, it goes right back to communicating all over again. If you notice that little thing that shifts and you don't bring it up then, and at that moment, or even a little bit after, it's going to be too late after a while. Yeah. yeah they, they say that nonverbal communication is the largest form that we miss when we do have uh, those moments of like awareness. Like yeah. These guys are saying, if you notice that shift in the behavior, in the conversation, uh, that should definitely say something. And uh, Shaniqua always talks about this, the intuition and the energy, Feel the change in the atmosphere. Yes. Facts. Yes. Facts. Absolutely. Yep. Facts. Listen to your inner spirits, man. They're telling you the truth. Mm-hmm. Listen to that inner nigga. He telling your ass. He said the inner <laughs> nigga. I'm, you, yo. I'm telling you. Like, inner nigga. <laughs> you got to listen, man. You got to listen. That was a problem for us when we was younger. We wasn't trying to listen. We thought we knew it all. Yep. In our twenties, trying to do stuff like we in our thirties, knowing good and damn well we know what the fuck we was doing. Mm-hmm. But it's all good though because we all learn from that shit. We all better from it, and we can also give it to other people 
that were in our situation in them ages too, whether they listen or not, mm-hmm. whether they listen or not. Cause there's a lot of people with my job that's in their twenties that come to my old ass for advice. And then when I give it to them, they be looking at me like you really, th-? I'm like, bro, I done been through this shit already before. I'm trying to keep you from going through it too. Mm-hmm. Cause you mentally, these kids mentally not ready for the type of shit we was dealing with when we was younger. Nope. About that, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree a little bit with that, Kevin, because like like my daughter, you guys saw my daughter, she's a bit more mature for her age, and I feel like mm. a lot of these kids nowadays, they're ready to have these difficult conversations. You I'll know? say a percentage. I won't say I won't say all of them. I'll say a majority might be ready for it, but then there's another part of them that are just not, from what I've seen, are not ready for that type of shit. Your daughter's on a whole other level, so absolutely. But it also right. depends on. But it also depends on their parents. Yep. Because a lot of a lot of kids are ready, but mm. then you get the parents that say, "Think about it." Your parents tell you, "If anybody do anything, tell me." Or if your brother, or sister, or friend did this, tell me. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, and then you doing it, but then a year or two later, now you a tattletale. So it's like, which one is it? You just told me to tell you. Now I'm a tattletale. Now I'm a snitch. So you also got to think about that too. Because I'm sure yeah. a lot of kids be willing and open. But as parents, it's kind of like a conflict. And it's kind of like a, you got to figure that out. What do you want me to do? You want me to tell you? Or you want me not to tell you? Because when I tell you, now I'm good. But then later on, now I'm a tattletale. Now I'm a snitch. But that kind of part lays into not only telling about stuff that if something happens, but let's say you need that advice from your parent. Do you really go to that parent that tells you, oh, you talking too much or you a snitch? Like, can you really go to that parent? But that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you're going to get now is like, I'm kind of closed up. I don't even want to talk to you. Yeah. You know, but I believe the kids now they they more open, but they more don't they don't they don't care at all. Yeah, they don't <laughs> they, give a shit. And, and, and I ain't gonna front. I like the new generation. Me too. I, I like them. They say what they they say what they gotta say versus how our parents was and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They say what's on their mind. They say how they feel. You know where the older generations like they disrespectful. No, they telling you how they feel. They telling you what's going on. Right. You know, yeah. you kind of maybe you kind of mad because you couldn't do it back then. Yep, so that's that's, that's a super fact right there. Mm-hmm. Yep, you didn't have the liberty to do that shit back then. Yeah, because who want to get punched in their face? Liberty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody want to get jacked for trying to be trying to be liberal, nigga. Like that shit crazy. Like Liber- yeah. liberty and liberation. Right. <laughs> I but don't yeah, know, yo. I used to tell my want... mother shit all the time, but she told me I overshare. And I'm like, yo, you want to know or not? You're going to get all of it. But apparently I overshare too much. Mm-mm. I think, uh... no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You go. No, I mean, the oversharing, I think, is good because we need to continue to have these conversations, allow them to be normal. Um, so, like, when you start making people feel uncomfortable about, telling the truth about the space that they're operating in, mm-hmm. you want to stay closed up. But when you open up about the spaces that you've been that you're really not happy about, you come to find out, oh, shit, they got some shit in the closet, too, that they trying to, you know, hold on to. But once mm-hmm. you allow them, it gives them a space of freedom to let that shit air out, to be spoken, so that way it doesn't hold the power over them that it does have. What do you think we could do as a whole to, and this is, this is a far, this is a shotgun question. What do you think we can do to help change the dating market now? What do people have to do? Uh Uh-oh, we got a hand. (laughs) All right, so I was talking to this professional. Allegedly. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, look, he was the same sign and everything. Shaniqua knows he was a dentist. Okay, baby. And um, he was telling me about the spaces that he was operating in and how, um, 
I don't know how we got in the conversation, but he said that like he was insecure in himself. And I said, look, instead of you, you know, going on the app and trying to talk to other people, why don't you work on yourself, you know? Like yes. if you're not sure about the space you want to operate in, you know, don't be walking around perpetuating this shit. It ain't good for you, it ain't good for me. And I was like, you know, I, I'll love you enough as a human to tell you that, you know, after this conversation, we, we're done. Yeah. Because I want you to go work on yourself. Mm-hmm. And I ain't talked to him in a week. <laughs> so hey, if that conversation needed to happen now rather than later. But you know. I do have those particular kind of conversations when I am on that app. Like, I just talk about, like, okay, what is it? that you're looking for and if I do hear something that like triggers something for me like a trauma of some sort that I'm mm-hmm. hearing that I recognize I try to bring that to their attention but yeah. once I drop whatever I need to drop I unconnect with that motherfucker and keep pushing yeah 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 people people need to know themselves I think I think that's a big part of it as individuals we need to really know who we are and what is it we really want out of our time in existence here because we only got a limited amount of time do we but that's why what's up kev but that's why it's kind of good to be you know single for a little while you got to be able to know who you are as a person what you bring to the table in future relationships or anything as far as being a relationship being friends with people and stuff like that Mm -hmm. you got to be in tune with yourself because if you sit in here being wishy-washy with yourself you're going to be in a wishy-washy relationship that's going to fail like the rest of them did Yep. Yep. Nobody got time for and that. Like you see. And that's why I think that the whole phase is important. Because if you think about it, you get that shit out of the way. Then, wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Sexual liberation. <laughs> let me finish, though. So, with the whole phase, if you get that whole phase out of the way and then do dating after that, you kind of know, all right, you did all that fuck shit. Let me see what I want. That's why I think the whole phase is important, bro. No, nah, no, nah, I disagree. I disagree. Can <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out? She gonna nuke your ass. She gonna say a nuclear. She gonna I'm hit just you though, knowledge. Because the the when I was in the whole phase and wilding out, cool. When I was done with that, I was like, shit. I I need a real fucking relationship. So and I knew the girls I was running through with, and I knew that shit was gonna happen as a relationship wise. So hmm. now I got to figure out what kind of woman I really want. And I took so the time then, to think about, I took the time of thinking about the, what kind of woman I want instead of taking the time of like, yeah, I just want to fuck the shit out of this bitch. My thing is this, with that whole phase shit, that shit could kind of fuck you up emotionally too. Cause you so used to just banging out all of these chicks back to back to back. Mm-hmm. At some point you're going to lose yourself and what you really want and what the end game is to all of it. Yeah. I was still stuck on the back to back to back. <laughs> but I, but no, nah, I, I agree with, I do agree with you, Kenna. It's just everybody just different. Everybody, yeah, different. yeah, yeah. So that's I agree with you. I'm messing with you, but I, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me be a hoe, son. Crisis averted. <laughs> Crisis averted. That's because that's how that's one way of seeing it, and in a way I see it, that's another way of seeing it too. Because remember, right. it's everybody a snowflake out here. Everybody not built the same way. Yeah, and, and that's why that's why it all go it all goes back to like everybody need to know who they are and be yep. comfortable and okay with who you are and not trying to change the person you with. If you comfortable okay with who you are, then you're gonna attract the type of people that is like you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Once you once you you good with that, then you'll attract the type of people you you know you actually want. Right. Yeah. What you think about, you bring about. If you're thinking about yourself and you take care of yourself, it's you're gonna attract it. You just gotta right. be patient too. I think patience is another big patience piece. Patience is it. a is a yeah. huge piece. It, it know, definitely is. Because um a lot of we're in a supercharged society where everything is like instant gratification like i want this right now like i don't want to do the work i want the shit right now like asap you know what i mean and you know you're in such a rush you don't really get to pay attention to the signs and you miss out you know 
I had, I mean, shoot, I'm 43, like I keep saying, um, till April. <laughs> but with Shaniqua, she's, she's been my ear. Like, you know, when you have those friends that know what your goals are, those also help uh, with redefining what your relationship goals might be. Mm. And, you know, like you guys have all been saying, shit, take your fucking self out for a date. Take yourself out to dinner. Take yourself to go do the things that you enjoy so that when whoever comes along, like you guys keep saying, you attract that energy. They'll want to get into some of the things that you do. Whoever is going to come, they're going to elevate you. They're not going to bring you down. Right. That's 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 a great, great point. Great point. Really something to consider. You know. Felton, you still alive over there, man? What you think? No, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm just taking it all in. I woke him up. I woke him up. I'm here. I woke up the dragon. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> hey, listening, so man. what's what's your take, man? What do you think? What do you think we need to do collectively to really improve the quality of dating and relationships in society I think- right now? I think this might be a little controversial, but I think we should I think we should go back to arranged marriages and shit. Ooh. I just think I just think I just I think like that, that. Nah, for real. I I think people, niggas' brothers and sisters should be vetting who's bring who are they bringing into the family because I feel yeah. like those numbers have to be statistically better than going out to find some woman who you think you love, and then ten years down the line she's gone. Yeah. Like it. <laughs> That's and I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not harping. I'm not harping on that either. I'm just using it as an example, not harping on it. But I'm just saying, like, you, yeah, I think it needs to be back to some traditional ways, man. Like having right. parents, like, really vet them, vet these parents, vet these um, these potentials out, man. Because really, a marriage is a business proposition. It's not really what people think it is. We really break it down. Really. Yeah, I like that. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an accumulation of, of, of funds and, and, and properties. And that, you know, and, right and, and, yeah, and, in Africa, so I feel that. Yeah. If we were in Africa, we'd be trading cows and shit right now for, for and, marriages and, and shit. Absolutely, so. And he's absolutely right about that because nope. I do talk to other foreigners mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I do love that. I love the fact that, you know, like the arranged marriage and it's done in other countries. Yes. Like it's it's yes. still like it's still done and it works. Mm-hmm. Like I, I do like yeah. that because that that's definitely in these other countries on how they do stuff, it's dope. And they they don't they don't do no ring and wedding and all that up. They don't do all that craziness. And I, mm-hmm. I think that's dope. Like I that's dope. Yeah. And they I'm, say like they say like because of pair bonding, you know, there's a, there's some statistics about pair bonding. They mm-hmm. did like a like a study about it, saying that if you if you are a, a female has more than like five or six sexual partners, I think your likelihood of pair bonding goes to like thirty five percent, and then the number goes as the number of the bodies go higher, the number the likelihood of you finding you know forever pair bonding just goes down. Yeah. Even even lower, so, that makes so yeah, much it, sense. yo, it really does, yo, and it's crazy because I was reading about it and I'm like, so it's okay for us to do it, but then on the flip side of it, it's it's a whole different ballgame. Mm. So it, it, so are we dealing with a market of of, I guess, damn, I don't have to say this correctly, um, overused, well, over sexualized market. Yeah, I mean, are we using? Yeah, like, really? Are are we really? Well, that's, that's what the market's full of, really, right? Well, that's, as of, as that's of now. Why, well, that's why with me, I don't like reading, because when you're reading, this, and this is just my perspective, when you're reading something, it's that person' perspective. Mm-hmm. That's why I rather mm-hmm. talk. That's why I rather talk to people. Like even last night, you know, I'm in Chicago. I'm talking to the guy from Palis- Palestinian. Palestine or something like that and I'm like okay. I never even I never even heard of that so he's explaining a lot of stuff to me because my whole thing is with reading that's that person perspective you know what I'm saying so if you're reading a book you could be reading a book and it could be you're not reading you're not understanding it but it could be really 
male chauvinist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that's why with me, like I read something that okay, it's one of my friends' book, but mm -hmm. to actually study and and learn stuff, I need to travel. I need to see that for myself. I need yeah. to understand it for myself because if I'm reading something, I'm getting your perspective. Mm -hmm. And and that's just like YouTube. I could be looking at somebody like, yeah, I went to Africa and I got robbed, yada, yada, yada. I went to Africa by myself. I'm out two, three o'clock in the morning by myself. I didn't get yeah. robbed. Yeah. You know, so it's also, you know, a person perspective. And I don't know, like the reading thing. I don't know. I don't know. It depends. It, it depends on the person. It depends yeah. on the person. Like yeah. for me, I will try to get, I would try to gather bits and pieces for every resource possible. And then if I'm engaged enough to say, all right, well, there's still some questions left unanswered. Then I go do my own venturing out and researching and, and all of that. And that's, and that's what he was just saying. Like, he still have his questions. Like, do it mean that you understand? Yep. Yep. That, and that's was just, that was my thing. Like, I'm more like him, like, like, dang, now I got to, I mean, the book is supposed to tell you, or you can just go through your experiences. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Like some of the things that are written out there are written to support certain point of views, like mm -hmm. you mentioned. Um, I do agree with that idea, Felton. I think it's, I don't think there's just one way to get there. Yeah. I think it's a collective thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I do understand that reading shit, yo, especially on the text message, yo. You don't yes. know that person's tone when they text. Yes. You do not know they tone. So if somebody want to get an arguing me, argument with me and it's on the text, I won't answer. I will not yes. fucking answer. That like, that kind of that. coincides with um social media posts in general because you can look at something and that person is saying it not necessarily to be a stab at you, but they may be saying it for other reasons and we'll look at it and we'll be like, oh, this motherfucker talking about me and go off emotionally charged right away. You know what I mean? That's why it's important. Like Shaniqua has been alluding to is making sure that you talk to people and have that conversation. You know what I mean? You got to have that conversation. You got to have that one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, that's true. Well, I always get, well, I don't know how to talk to you, so I got to say it through text. And I'm like, well, then nah. you're not going to talk to me because nah, I'm not going to yeah. answer the text. Nah, certain things need to be said via voice oh, yeah. or in person. You want to know what's the funniest thing that I've heard while trying to communicate conversations with people? <laughs> the number one thing that I've always heard with me is, and maybe I can contest it this shit, Oh, the reason why I didn't want to tell you is because I thought you were going to get mad. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah, why. Pretty much. I yep. heard that a lot. That's, that's, that's everybody say that, though. Yeah. Like, I'm like. They just see the way people react to things. So, and, and it just goes back to which, what they were saying in the beginning. Like, you have to know who you are and be comfortable who you are to be able to express everything. Because. Yeah, and that people don't want to say stuff because of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're not comfortable with who they are. That's that's the difference. <laughs> no, I'm laughing at that because that's that's like that was me and my daughter. Like she didn't want to approach me because I I fucking went off because I didn't have any sense. I mean, yeah. going back, I didn't have any it, sense back then. It go all yeah. See, look, it go all the way down to. You be in a relationship, you having kids, something at your job is is all around. That's yeah. why a person need to be comfortable with who they are, know who you are, so you're able to say what you feel. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, like I'll still like have like those moments where I'll like turn around and give her like this dirty look, or I'll say something and she'll be like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh fuck, am I okay?" Then I need to check myself. Yeah. So, but yeah. Need to know self. Shaniqua, I love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> for it's, it's a, look, look, it's a Pisces thing. Kev, Kev, the same way as you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fran, Fran, you better ask Kev for his number. You <laughs> <laughs> Listen. 
Secondary Listen, contact. And I keep it a, and I'm gonna keep it a stack with you like I do with everybody else. I'm not gonna front, I ain't gonna fraud you or none of that shit. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, we too old for that. Too fucking old for that. I don't really got the time for that bullshit. Yeah. yeah you, get, you get some people who who is still like that. You get some signs who still like that. You get a, a cancer who won't say nothing, just be angry all the damn time. Mm. But won't that won't tell you how they feel. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, your they tell you how shit, they yo. feel. They tell you how they feel, <laughs> but it's too emotionally charged for you to, for you to even fucking contemplate. Like, it's too much. Some yeah. some Virgos is not going to. They're not going to tell you how they feel because they're going to say, "Oh, I didn't know if you're going to get mad and yada yada." Some of these signs they have their ways. Yeah. So I don't. I, even though it's an age thing, it's also mm-hmm. a sign thing. It's funny some because. People, my ex is a Virgo, so that makes. Oh a my lot god! Of sense. That's why you had cra- that's why you had craziness. What's wrong with you? I didn't know what I didn't know, and <laughs> and you know you 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 learn you learn through trial and error. You make your mistakes and all of that, and you know they got now they I know got, they got uh, issues. Don't you see it in their eyes? Don't you see Beyonce? <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. Looking, I wasn't looking at eyes like that. I mean, that was the problem. <laughs> yeah, that was a real problem. It was a real problem. Fucking, fucking sneaker got me and these girls DM asking them what their birthday and they so that time because I really don't fucking know. Yo. I'm dead ass asking them right now. Like yo, like, I'm to, I don't know. But I can't. Yo, I get a lot of guys who I used to either play ball with or went to school with. Yo, yeah. I'm talking to this girl. I'm talking to that guy. Like, I get people and I be telling them, nah, that one's not for you. Yeah. And I be like, why you keep dating the same sign? Like, they be yeah. like, yo, I didn't pay that no mind. Like, some no people, they, they date the same sign and they not even paying it no attention. They wonder why they get in the same, get in the same the situation. Mm. I think my toughest relationship was with a Taurus. Mm. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That shit was tough. Two stubborn people? Yeah. That shit was tough. I think nah, was, my, I'm in a relationship with a Taurus. Mine was, was a fucking uh, a Sagittarius. Shorty was a whole Sag. <laughs> Barbara <laughs> Sag. <laughs> and a funny thing was, and my daughter a Sag, so that make it even funnier. A uh, December Sag? Uh, November. Yep. I mean, that's Scor- that Scorpio says they was suck. The only thing with them is they business minded, but they don't put it out there. But they're very business, but they they cool. I mean, what was the well? I could tell you the problem right now. I'm gonna tell you the problem. <laughs> she had to retort. She had to modify the statement. I'm gonna I'm tell you. I'm gonna tell you the problem. The Scorpio Sage look. They love the Pisces man, but the times where you want to be communicative and vulnerable, they not up for that. Mm. Now they looking at you as all the way weak. I'm letting you know that right now because I have Scorpio Sag friends and they look up to Pisces as top leaders. Mm -hmm. But they want you to communicate, but when you communicate and act a certain way, now they kind of like they looking down on you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why? Huh? I said, why, why are they looking down on because, me? Because with the Scorpio Sag, like they kind of, first of all, they two, si- they two signs. So they, they kind of battle in two signs. And that Pisces man is funny. He's cool. He's up front. And to them- <laughs> Kevin's over there like, yup. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they stable, but it's what like- What is he doing? But, oh, my fault. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> wow, Max, you make sure you keep that shit in there. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. But you must have, you must have showed some type of vulnerability, and, and that's what happened. Yeah, Shorty was like, I think I was messing with Shorty for like, like a couple months, because I messed with two November Sages. And that one particular one, that's when I moved out here. Shorty was on some different shit. She didn't know what she wanted, neither. She was all over the place mentally. So I was just like, yeah, I can already see this is going to be a problem. Yeah. 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 I'm going to tell you right now, us Pisces go with other Pisces, Geminis, Leos, or foreigners. We love foreigners. 
that's it. They understand us. We get the same, the same love back, the same everything. Go with foreigners. Mm. Yeah. Just like a Lib- mm. just like the Libra man. The Libra man goes with another Libra woman or mm. an Aries woman or a foreigner. Mm. If you try, if you try one of those, you know what I'm saying? Like you'll kind of be getting the same that you want. Mm. But it's not, it's not what we read, like, okay, Pisces go with, you know, Kansas, all that stuff they put out. I tried that. It, that didn't work. No, they that didn't shit work. don't work. Yeah. That shit don't work. Yeah. But if yeah. you if you actually go around, date some people, write down their birthday, put their traits together, you see what you like, what you dislike, you get an understanding, you're not going, you, y'all going to be together for years. Y'all going to, you know, have all that. Yeah. Shit, I learned something but, tonight. But I also think us Pisces belong, like, honestly, we actually belong kind of single and we can mingle, and that's it, because we have a certain type of energy that a lot of Yo, people. Yo, shut up. That's with. it. Don't. Sh- no, that's it. We're done. We're done. We're done. Where did those folks come from? Right? <laughs> he was half asleep. He was having sleep with his daughter in his hand, and he said, Wait, nah, what? Nah, nah, wait, wait, wait. You're giving out the secret. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Tell Are him, you a Pisces too, Yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a February yeah. Pisces. Yeah, what she said was 100% correct. Yeah, yeah you, we, we, we sort of need to be, we sort of need to be like that. It's kind of weird, but it, I 100% agree with that. I mean, you were because introvert we, we, too, so I mean, that, that, that adds. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, but it's also like, I'm, I'm, I'm a flowy person, so I can just really, just really go with the flow. Yeah. And yep. it just, it, it's really easy for me to just, we're like chameleons, social chameleons. Like we can just be yeah. there and not even know we're there, but then we'd be mm-hmm. everybody's center. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of, it's kind of weird. So I know exactly what you're talking about. When you kind of, you kind of want to be single, oh, you kind of right. need to be single and single and ready to mingle. Cause that's who we are at our best characters. Mm-hmm. Cause that's who we are. Mm-hmm. And I always battled with that shit. Always did. Sorry. Oh yeah. Well, I wasn't doing nothing and I'm on Zoom. So I said, I might as well just come. All right. <laughs> Nigga, you ain't muted. Yeah, you have a whole sidebar. We're about to go to Kenneth's house, y'all. Oh, yeah, yeah. For real. oh no, nah, I'm not. I'm not even home. I thought I was on mute again, y'all. What the fuck? See, Is you I'm driving right now? I'm at, I'm at the Amazon warehouse. Oh, which man. one? I tell you right now, that's not getting. What heck is that? I'm gonna leave that I'm in. Not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not working. Uh, my father-in-law works here, so he need a ride home. Okay. Oh. Hey, yo, you need to mute your shit. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> we all, we was all attentive too. We was all like, oh, he got something he got to say. We was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, my boy, I swear to God, I thought I was on mute, bro. That's nah, all man. me. Something, you said something earlier that like, um, you guys are in the room and you are there, but people won't really know that you guys are there, but you're like every everybody's center. And it's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I think I'm not sure if this is the right term, but like alchemically, like when you think of the Pisces, you think water, water mm-hmm. centers all of land. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Wait, Pisces are low key to shit. I don't know about low key, but I know I'm the shit. I ain't low key. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that confidence. Like, I like how I set that shit up too. Oh, I like how I set that up. She was like, was like the last. No, I'm the shit. Like I don't, I don't a little bit of everybody. Look, I done came up with a nice logo for us and everything. Like I'm going in. Like I, nah, we we lit. listen. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck with it or don't fuck with it at all. Shit. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But I think I, I honestly think. The men, y'all men are higher up there. Like, y'all definitely higher up there, but the type of woman y'all deal with is not in y'all lead. Mm. In, the beginning, in the beginning, it's cool, but mentally, y'all need more spiritual. Yeah. Y'all need more Y'all need more confident type of chick. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Stop, but the man. spiritual Stop. part, y'all are God. Y'all are powerful. Yeah. And I, I, I believe, you know, that kind of that kind of messes with y'all sometimes, you know, because y'all trying to help out whoever y'all dating and talking to, but they mm-hmm. are not on your level. Yeah. Yo, that's yeah. it. That's yeah, the second that's... time she did this. Yeah. Cut this <laughs> 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 off now, man. 
Come on, man. <laughs> God damn, man. We <laughs> done, man. Oh, this bitch said she damn. had cancer. Oh, fuck no. God damn. He's still not mute. He's still not mute. <laughs> no, I, 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 I know. Let's get I that, man. I took, I took it on mute. <laughs> I'm saying it out loud, yo. The fuck? Oh, my God. Listen, cancer you don't want. They up and down emotional, up and down depressed. That's no, no. Yeah, Yo, that's that fits her. Yo. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Yo. I got that. Oh, my God. I can't. I cannot. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, no, nah, we need to have, we need, we really do need to have an episode that is centric on um, horoscopes, numerology, um, human design, you know, yeah. different philosophies. Uh, I can't, I can't get off of that, that, that like, point that she made, yo. I'm, that I'm we very, always choose the wrong person. I'm very, very, um, very interested in that, you know, because it's, it's a different perspective. You know what I mean? And you can really learn a lot on reading a person. Right. And, and and looking at those different signs, like your knowledge, Shaniqua, on the, the horoscope shit, that's like super next level shit. Like I was used to like, I know my sign inside now and I'm a Libra, I'm an air sign. So I kind of see myself as a flower, you know what I mean? But like to get it down to that level, like, oh, you, uh, you're, you're a balanced Libra or you're a, a, a Aries, whatever, like that shit, man, that, that's, Next fucking level shit. What do you mean? Nah, you floor me. No, but I believe I believe we all know this. It's just for us Pisces, we can slow down and look at stuff and pay mm. attention. Because mm -hmm. if you put if you put together people you dated and you mm -hmm. look at if you know their birthdays, then you you got it. I just dated everybody to understand it a little more. But yeah. we we all we all know it. It's just we moving so fast. Mm. 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 that's it like i'm sure if you tell me you know a couple of women you dated if you know their birthdays mm -hmm. not they sign but if you know the actual birthdays yeah they different women but they have similar traits mm -hmm. so once you start putting that together and then whoever you work with whoever you talk to your mother your aunt your aunt, all of that it's, yeah. it's it's the same thing i was dating somebody that was an aquarius and i'm like you know still didn't pay it no mind but she got traits of my mother. Mm. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So, but I believe it's something that we all know. It's just, like I said, you know, we we just kind of put it together a little quicker in our head because we just, something's wrong with us, Pisces. We just can't stop thinking. Nah, you're just more in tune with the shit. Mm. We, do kind of, like, stopper, we do kind of overthink, though, too. Yeah, That's another all problem. All the time. All the That's time. That's another problem. Bro. Now mm. overthinking, them wheels be turning. And it's like the stupidest shit could just come up in your head. You know good and damn well, like something made the math ain't mathing. So you just doing all this extra math shit. Ain't mathing. Yo, Bro, what is this trademark? Like this trademark night like tonight. Yo, for real. The math ain't mathing. mathing. I like this shit. For real, yo. Damn. But hey, man, really, really good discussion, man. We, it's almost midnight over here, man. So, oh we, man, and, wow. Yeah, yep. we going, we going, we going to wrap this up real quick. I got a bunch of fucking quotes, but I'm gonna just hit y'all with a few um, that kind of ties into the discussion that we had tonight. Um, so get your pens and your papers out if you care to do so. Get your cell phones out. Get ready to type these motherfuckers in and all that. And of course, as a courtesy, I will throw these quotes inside the chat. So you guys have them and can refer to them. You know, what you do with them is on you, you know, but this kind of brings some stuff home, all right? <clears throat> so the first quote is from Rumi, R-U-M-I. And I quote, do not seek for love, but seek for all the barriers within you that you have built against it. Do not seek for love, but seek for all the barriers within you that you have built against it. Okay. The next one is from Leo Tolstoy, and I quote, if you look for perfection, 
you'll never be content. Mm. If you look for perfection, you'll never be content. Next one is from Confucius. And I quote, better a diamond with a flaw than a pebble without. Better a diamond with a flaw than a pebble without. All right, and then this last one kind of jobs home with what Shaniqua has been talking about throughout the night. This comes from Soren Kirkgaard, and I quote, the most common form of despair is not being who you are. The most common form of despair is not being who you are. Yo, Max, I got one too. What's I up? just want to throw there. I just peeped this. Yeah. And it's from the Dalai Lama. Ooh, let's go. Now, this says this is this is short, simple, and sweet. This basically ties into everything we've been talking about for like yeah. the last almost three hours. Let's go. Happiness is the highest form of health. Yes. Happiness is the highest form of health. I've heard a modified version of that too. I've heard uh, yes. happiness is the happy is the greatest form of wealth. Mm -hmm. And that was from yeah. Mahatma Gandhi. And this is from the Dami, the Dalai Lama. That shit was random as shit, but that shit ties into everything we've been talking about. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Banger. That's a banger. That's on my list. Go ahead and throw that in the chat too if you got it. Let me see. Throw that in. You know, I type a little slow, so you got to bear with a motherfucker. I enjoyed tonight's conversation. Yeah, man, this was this was a necessary one, man. Like, because people people need to know, you know what I mean. They need to take a knee and really self evaluate. Like, that can't be stressed enough. Like, you can't just keep running on the hamster wheel and not know your destination. Now, obviously, you don't have a destination on a hamster wheel, but I'm just saying. That's the destination. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like this conversation, like, definitely got to know, like, Fran on a on a on a different level today too. Yeah, like, <laughs> definitely on a different level today. This was no dope. Bullshit. This is you really too, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, listen. Fuck that. She got me in here looking for zodiac signs and shit. I'm Stuff is really coming together right now. I'm like, see, ain't nobody tell you any of the bitches you used to fuck with talking about when your birthday was. Like that was on you. That was on you. Nobody told you to do. <laughs> see now he's gonna be up all night long. Oh my god! Hitting these bros and DMs like, yo, when's your birthday? Fuck you, nigga. Why you ain't talk to me in like years? What you want to know my birthday for? You gonna go get me? Nah, dude, dude, real shit. I'm cool. With all my exes except for one. I was gonna say, Only like, bro, one. how are you still talking to these chicks? That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, that shit sound messy as shit to me. Like, <laughs> so, I was told. I, kind of, I'm with I, you. It's nothing wrong with being friends with yeah, ex. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, yeah. I was told. I, 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 I done some fucked up shit, though. I have done some fucked up shit. But they told me I'm too damn lovable to hate. And I still don't understand. What? what? Hey man, that's I, cold, that's what bro. That's I was told. That's what I was told. That's cold, bro. It's cold. You're too lovable to hate. It's cold for he got a good dick. I don't want to fuck it up just in case he come back. Ooh. <laughs> that's just not like to me. But I ain't never come. I ain't never going back to that. Especially that cancer. <laughs> fuck that shit. Damn. Oh yeah, looking at this shit. Ain't no two Gemini's. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Shaniqua, I got a question. <laughs> Gemini's. They, they, they not, I bet you they're not from the 1st to the 12th of June. Probably not. No. Nope. Nope. I, I, I know. I, I know. That's why. Don't, don't. Uh, shout, shout, shout out to my man. Shout out to my man, Chad, because you know he's June 15th. Yep. yep. So, yeah. yeah. But, he, but he, yeah, because he's a, he's a, what? Uh, Gemini Cancer. Yep. So he he has his way of talking and everything, but then he 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 got his little emotional ways here and there too. Yeah. He got the cancer. Yeah. 
That's funny, man. Oh, I thought I thought that like we were connecting with our same signs, but we need to know their birthday so we can separate those. Delin- yeah, del- I mean, delineate from I mean, it. yeah, because from the first to the twelfth, you're one sign. The thirteenth <laughs> represent a new sign, and mm-hmm. it also represent two different numbers. Mm. So they're 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 two. They're, now you're two people. That's why I said I don't I don't read it. It's just talk talk to a person that's on the thirteenth. Mm. They they're not the same person as a person on the twelfth or the eleventh. Yeah. That shit could make a difference, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The numbers yeah. make a huge difference. Mm. She about to have me looking at motherfuckers like lotto numbers now. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, I think you kind of prophetically said something like, seriously, you looking for the winning numbers? Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm roll the dice, baby. Roll the dice. <laughs> wow. Snake eyes, bitches. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. It's oh, fucking my weird. God. But nah, man, this was definitely a really good episode. It was it was definitely a lot more lighthearted than last week's episode. And it's time for... I'm old as fuck. I'm about to go to bed. <laughs> First of all... Shout out to the whole West Coast because we got some good ass fucking food and the vibe is always chill over there. That's why I love going to California. No bullshit. Yo, not for nothing, not for nothing. And this is me kind of spitballing. Me and Mike, me and Mike was talking about um once a year doing what we are deeming a Townsend takeover, where we all travel somewhere and we meet up and we bullshit and we shoot a live, like in person going state to state every fucking year. And we gonna have to make a trip out there to Cali and link up with you, friend, like on some real shit. So like, we'll let you know when that's gonna be. Point me into the direction where the In-N-Out Burger's at first. That's it. I gotta right. have one. It's like five minutes down from me. See? See? <laughs> See, that's how it is. That's what. That's why I fuck with Cali. That's how I set up. Between two to five minutes, you're not going far. Shout out to California, B. Stop playing. Like, <laughs> uh, fuck that. Show me to the first taco truck. That's what I'm about, yo. Those just be lit. Ooh. Hey, Listen, bro. Those shit's every, 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 every other corner. Every other corner, bro. Because when I go to Cali, I go to North Cal, Sacramento, all of that shit. I be up that way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. in the booty part. I'm in, I'm in SoCal. Yeah, I ain't been to SoCal yet, but I can't wait. Yeah, man. We got to we gotta travel, man. Like, That'll be the only one we ain't gonna be able to catch is Shaniqua because she all over the place. Now, nah, she'll be, she'll be in Africa, Africa for every one. <laughs> <laughs> she going to Africa there. Fuck that. Like, we going to Africa. We going back home. Fuck that. Uh, I ain't even fucking with Shaniqua no more. She just fucking. <laughs> he's, still, he's still tight about that. <laughs> he's still going on. He's mumbling. He over here looking up Zodiac signs Yo, and all that. Because she's. Cause she making mad sense, and I find out the signs, and she, and you know, she just disgusted. I'm like, that bitch really was like that. Yo, but you gotta understand something. Shaniko been batting a thousand since she been coming on these lives, man. Stop playing. Oh, yo, fuck her, yo. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jesus. Look, 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 you can call me anytime. I help you out. Look, I, look, I was just, I was before we get on. I was just telling Fran. I'm like, yo. Kenneth used to help me out back in the day. Like, Kenneth was the only yep. one giving me the ball. The only person Facts. giving me the ball when I was playing ball. I done missed Facts. a thousand times. Kenneth is still giving me the ball. Try again. Try again. Pretty much. Look at that so shit, I got, man. I, listen, I got you. If you need me, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, your turn, it's your turn to catch the ball. For oh, real. Well. See how that shit work, America? Yeah. That shit, he got he paying it forward. You never, you never know what role a person will play in your life. That's why you always got to put your best foot forward for yourself and the people around you because you never know when that's when that karma is gonna come full circle on your ass and that person can either help you or fucking put you in the dirt. I'm just saying. Well, let me say this real quick before we leave. <laughs> I know we've been trying to leave for like ten minutes now. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> But yo, Shanique, well, you already know I'm gonna have to hit you up because me and you gonna have to talk on the side too, cause you know that's some shit I got spitball at you real quick. Uh-oh. And- we, we, we definitely, and and just so you know, and I'm gonna say it on the live. I don't care what nobody say. I understand therapy. Pisces don't need therapy. We need each other. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> that energy right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, and I'm not. I'm not saying people don't need therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But us yeah. Pisces is totally different. We on a different level. I tried the therapy thing. The therapist is not even together. They just like. They just like our stories. Mm. That's it. But yeah, I'm gonna be quiet. Mm. Go ahead. I feel <laughs> that. That's oh my that. God. <laughs> Look at me real quick. Uh, for my fucking story. But <laughs> it, like I said, it's always a pleasure when I see Shanique on here because she just yeah, be man. dropping gems. And then, Fran, like from the East Coast to the West Coast, man, like I fuck with you. I fuck with your energy and all of that shit. Like I like what you bring to the table and all of that. I'm just giving you your flowers now because it's only right. Take them and buy the book. Damn it! What? Can you hear me? What? Can you hear like, me? Wait, I, you, can buy, you can buy the book on Amazon. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, shit. Right Y'all can down. cash at me. I'll just send that motherfucker to you. There you go. There you That's go. even better. Shit. Don't you want that information in the chat? Yep. I'll drop it in the chat. Yeah, drop that in there. Drop that in there. You know what I mean? Okay. Fuck that. I'm going to talk to my therapist tomorrow. Let me tell you about this fucking Leo. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how we end the show. Y'all all have a great night. Yes. Love you. Yes. Pay attention to the signs, damn it. This was Grown Funk Talk. God damn it. We'll see you next week. We out of here. Peace.